so juicy sweet and then it doesn't die you know that song mm, no you don't no, know you I do know. know that song i'm just singing it badly you've seen the lord of the rings haven't you yeah yeah of course oh yeah. I, I think i know what you're talking about it's been a while dude i remember oh, watching where, like, faramir is looking over he's like it is death to be in the sacred pool and he's like he's got all the archers and he's holding his hand up and then frodo's like stop this creature is bound to me <laughs> and then he lowers his hand and then they all go back and then Gollum thinks he's been betrayed by Frodo awesome you know that bit yeah yeah awesome awesome what is up guys and welcome to the visual wood podcast episode number 30 and I'm here with the beautiful the elegant wooden potatoes hello Matt I like how musical we are do you yeah. think we are, at one point could do a, an all musical podcast I I, I, I totally think we could I totally think we could. Speaking Obviously. of musical, I wanted to ask you, how, how well can you rap? Wait, what are you talking about, Wyndham Sales? Can we... I want, no, I just want to just want to know. No particular reason. I just want to know. <laughs> no particular reason, reason, right? It's not a racist thing, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you started it off just right. You know, okay. you know, like, uh, I was just talking to someone, their daughter watches the show with them, and I'm like, oh my god. That's not good. Well, no, I think she's she's going to have a healthy, worldly intelligence about serious issues that go on. Actually, I think it's quite a nice thought that someone can grow up listening to conversations like this, you know, as compared to 50 years ago where it was all hush-hush and you couldn't, you know, a black man and a white man doing a podcast together. Scandalous! Were podcasts <laughs> even a thing in the 50s? Oh, that would be amazing back in the days. Like, we just meet up <laughs> and we just start doing, like, this radio show. And people didn't even know that we were black and white until, like, they... Like found dude, out, yeah. and it There's was this big scandalous thing. Oh, dude, it would be amazing! Someone make that movie. <laughs> when was like illegal radio a thing? Because that was a thing for a while. Like you'd had all these guys in their houses setting up their own radio stations because broadcasting, you know, hardware got just cheap enough that people could do it at a consumer level. But it was illegal because they weren't supposed to have the bandwidth or whatever. Like there was probably that kind of thing going on. Yeah, it would be pretty. Yeah, answer the question. Answer the question. No, no, there, there's no answer. What, what question? What question? Well oh, anyways, at? we have a ton, a ton of Guild Wars Two stuff. I mean, like really good ones as well. Like, what, what was it? Was it last podcast that we were? That was a little. Or we were kind of a little negative, kind of thing going um, on. You were. You were. You were. Or what they call last, a negative? Or what they call last a negative? Podcast? Huh? You were huh? angry last podcast. I was I, I angry. Guys, I talked to Matt about this between the podcasts. <laughs> I was li- I was re-listening to it, and there's the moment last podcast where Matt was like <laughs> talking about something, and then he stopped and goes, "Wait, just to clarify, I'm not angry." And that like I, my eyes went wide then, and I listened back to it, and you sounded so angry, dude. But that's like, what Whoa. happens when you get all like you know hot and heavy about a topic, and you start ripping it apart and stuff like that. That's how I get. It's just what are you talking? It's not angry. It's just angry. Passion. It's what scared. it's what people call passion. Passion. People use that a lot. Um, yeah. Anyways, Dude, you're so right. Passion in like s- public speakers tends to just be sounding very angry and slamming your fist on the table as you like as you uh, go on a tirade about some topic. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah so I do there that. is a lot going on. Do you want to jump straight? I mean, the, the the first thing I've got I've got pull I've got to pull you up on this as well. Between podcasts as well. What was the first like new feature thing that I told you in Skype? If you remember. New feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That had been data mined. Oh, 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 oh. Wardrobe. <laughs> and what was your response to wardrobe? Which I thought you'd be, like, pumped about. Right. But see, see, I was... What was the response? What was the response? I I, I, I actually don't remember. Pull it up. You Pull were like, up. you were like, oh, okay, that's... That's cool, but it's not enough. And I'm like, what? Come on, this is one of the biggest features that you like. No, oh, no, no. You're talking about after the fact, after I read it. Because did you read what it is? It's like a charge thing in the gym store. Like, that's not freedom. It's not freedom. Again, i got to bring you back to the discussion we had before about how if they give you perma freedom, then they take away so much incentive to play the game. What? Like if they if you just if you can just go through Guild Wars Two and over a course of three months unlock every single skin and then that's it like and you've got them all forever and you just picked your best set you're gonna be in the exact same position three months from now as you are right now where right. you're like oh I've already got all the skins I've already got everything why would I really want to care like so there's got to be I feel like there has got to be some kind of thing and also don't forget that like most of their money does come from the gem store at the moment I suppose and like 
there that maybe transmutation stones are a big money maker for them and that's why they're doing charges but we don't know how the charges work either so i I'm, yeah i'm, I'm not gonna judgment. get angry yeah i'm not gonna get angry until i see the full-on thing and so i see that blog post saying like oh this is how it's gonna be and it's yeah. v- it's very like bad i might get pissed <laughs> i'm i'm just warning Tune you in now on visual wood podcast number yeah. 36 that's my prediction 36 <laughs> for an angry rant from my visual <laughs> Oh, I I am not afraid. Um, I, there's also this picture someone drew for me of me saying, "Where's my G damn wardrobe?" And this is my character raging. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, really? yeah. Have you yeah. got it right now? Can I see it? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I I think you can see it. It's on my uh, on on the on the Patreon page. Is uh, an artist drew it for me and sent it on me. Uh, oh, by the way, good segue. Do you want to do you want to talk but, about that but, maybe? <laughs> By the way, um, s- thanks to Patreon and you guys supporting me through Patreon, I will be able to put the podcast on iTunes and Slap. SoundCloud. Yeah, dude. And that will be always always on. I'm scared. So for you guys. I'm nervous now. Why, because why? You, you know that this means we can now be directly rated in comparison to all the other f- wonderful podcasts out there. Oh, what no. If our, what if our viewers... Or, or listeners are like, oh yeah, this is a great podcast, but they've never really listened to many podcasts, you know. And then they try and find us on iTunes, and they're like, whoa, what's this podcast? The Rooster Teeth podcast. Well, oh, that seems pretty interesting. The Ricky Gervais podcast, you know, because they're on iTunes now. They listen to that and realize it's it's game over for us at that point. <laughs> I'm sure we still bring some some laughs, you know. You but know? Ricky Gervais talks about Guild Wars Two every podcast. It's like, how can we compete with that? He's a comedian. And he's with Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Okay, he I have talk no about idea who those too. people are. Oh, okay. Really? Oh, you've got to listen to that podcast. It's quite old now, but oh my god! And the radio, sh- the radio shows are better. I'll give you. I'll tell you that straight away. Radio shows are amazing. So I people who have listened will know. I'll link. I'll link it to you if you like. So are we already on iTunes as of this upload? Or no, 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 no. It, it, at the end of the month, that's when the funds come in, and there's a link there to the picture. Oh snap! Oh snap! Okay, oh. I was on your Patreon page, but then I got distracted with the conversation. Forgot. <laughs> wow! Look at this thing. <laughs> Where is my goddamn wardrobe? Yeah. Yeah, you look pretty angry, dude. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> this is this is my mental image of you last podcast for like forty percent of it at least. Where is R- this? Ah. <laughs> Well, oh, to give a little backstory, I hate transmutation stones, and I even told Colin Johansson that in an interview. If you guys look back into that interview when I had uh, went to PAX, so mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I want my wardrobe, and that's what I've been waiting for. So hopefully, it's done tastefully and not very annoying. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it will be okay. It won't be too bad. But there's a lot of other good stuff coming out as well. But um, I didn't get a chance. I actually watched like the first five minutes of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. And I didn't get a chance because I've been working oh, on other no. stuff. What, are you telling... What, what, no, you got to describe to me. So you sat there watching Tinker Tailor. What's the thought process in your head that makes you turn it off? Oh, no, no. I, I My wife comes home. Life okay. happens. So and it's then, not you got bored in the first five minutes. We're like, no, no, no. Right Actually, around. I was like, I, I feel, I feel like my eyes have been opened a little bit more since I started watching. I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm getting more mature when it comes down to movies since I've been watching so many of them, and I'm actually yeah. paying attention to detail and like seeing like if like a scene is slightly off or what the director or the 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 um, cinematography is trying to teach me through what you know what the certain scenes or the, the camera view on a certain object or something like that and i kind of mm-hmm. look for those stuff now and i felt like the first five minutes was okay it was a lot better than i remembered because i watched this like i don't know like a year or two ago and i can't yeah. really remember what was going on maybe i was just super sleepy that day um but it seemed to make sense even though it's kind of slow but what did you think without spoiling anything Please. All right, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're in we're in movie time, I guess, right now. Um, right. Five minutes, guys. Only five uh, minutes. I'm on the clock. I got a countdown clock yes. going. I I won't spoil it. For, for the first time, I do actually agree with you. This is a movie that can be spoiled because this is a movie entirely about finding something. All right. So that people know, this film is actually um, a film adaptation of a book, I believe, that was written in the 70s. Yes. And also there was Paul Tinker. through the. 
through the through the eighties there was a British like mini TV series on, and that's why I recognise this thing. Like it, it's the kind of thing that if you're grown up as an English person, you might find it's the kind of thing your dad watches, right? And I remember this. It was like one of those shows. It's like you know, like Dad's Army and stuff like this from way back then. In uh, obviously, it's completely different, like stylistically. But okay, so. Basically, it's a Cold War espionage spy movie, and it's following um, the British intelligence services as they're basically, you know, engaging in in um, spying against and for um, and everything around uh, that basically to do with the Russians and namely an incident that that happened in Hungary. Um, and the the film is very much if you're not into espionage and spying and you know very um there's a word for it very loaded uh dialect from people you know lots of jargon in people's speech yeah. you know to about spy if you're not into that then maybe you won't enjoy it. and i can understand why people will be turned off as as a slow movie for me watching it um yeah there were some moments that felt slow but it was i was tense the whole way through the film like there's so many sequences in that film where you're like oh no what's about to happen like and it can be hard to follow i after i watched it i went back to the wiki page which i often do if i feel like i didn't fully appreciate a film like if i watch a film and it concludes and i'm like what was the point of that and like it didn't you know drive me to any real emotion so what was the point in watching it i often then go to the wiki page and see if i've missed some subtext somewhere um anyway i read just the, the plot on wiki of this film and i realized i'd missed a whole ton of stuff but i understood it at least a superficial level a pretty good level i'd say and i think it, it's worth a watch like i remember you were saying tinker taylor um had like no payoff you were saying in your original description of it that you felt like the whole movie was building to something and then it had no payoff and i can kind of understand that as well especially if you didn't fully understand what was going on like it ends with an event and if you don't understand who the characters are in that event Mm -hmm. because there's so many characters in the film like and then it ends and you're like oh okay so it ended with this character doing this thing and it's like why did he do that well if you if you like after I read the wiki and I understood so much more of everything I was seeing, like through the whole film, you keep seeing like these like ladies making out with one another in the background. It's like, what's that? What's going on? And like, I just genuinely didn't get it. And there's a whole bit about one of the characters motives and why one character can figure something out that's based around that. And then I read the wiki page. And I was like, Oh man, that makes so much sense. So anyway, see, it, it was a pretty it, good see film. That, but that, See what you're telling me. It's that it's, it's not a good movie because basically you have to read the wiki. It's the same thing with Guild Wars two. It's just like, Oh, Oh, the tie-ins. Or well, why do you no, have to listen no, to no, Winter no. Potatoes, Winter Potatoes uh, videos just to understand, Understand the lore of Guild Wars. So no, I, I, I don't think to. it is that. I, I don't think it is that. I mean, you could you could make the argument that because it's an adaptation, the people making yeah. the film expected people to know a bit more about the plot, so there was a higher level of understanding book. required. Yeah, um, if they have read yeah, the book but, before. On on Rotten Tomatoes, it got an eighty three from critics. So obviously, those are the people who actually are paying attention and you know dissecting everything and they enjoyed it right so you Mm -hmm. if you were doing that you probably would enjoy it more but in the audience from fifty thousand people it got a 65 out of 100 yeah that 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 makes perfect sense i think that really does show basically what the film's like yeah i think you can though yeah you, you, if you can cut through, if you have more intelligence than me, um, if you can cut through a bit more of the jargon, I'm not saying I found it a difficult watch. What I did as well, because you said you were getting like bored of the film, out of curiosity, I, as I was watching it, every now and then I'd just go and like move the mouse on my computer screen so that I could see how far it tracked into the film. And... Um, and every time I did it, I made sure I was still fully engaged. And like, first time I did it was half an hour in. And then the second time I did it was like one hour, 10 minutes in. And then I did it again right before the end. And the entire film, I was engaged and I was tense uh, when when tension was called for. And I was curious about the resolution of the film. And I understood it well enough to be able to follow the general narrative. And I appreciated the acting in it. And I appreciated some of the characters that they cast. Like one of the women is pretty interesting. Like you don't see like largely overweight middle-aged women take you know significant roles in films and yet there was like one of those in this film and that sounds like such a stupid thing to care about but you know there was a lot of stuff i appreciated about the film it's just um you no, know, you're, if it's you're not right. a genre for you you won't like it at all i'm sure you uh, won't um but yeah i i, I guess that woo, we hit the five minute mark but i oh, did we but i watched this yeah i watched the um yeah we, we ended up pretty good um i, I watched this like two or three years ago 
And I feel like I was in a different mind because when I started watching it and I watched like the whole beginning scene, I felt like I understand it a, a lot more than I did back then. And I was like, oh, OK. And I definitely um, even though the, this podcast is going to end, I'm still going to go back and watch it when I have free time to see if I would appreciate it a lot more. And I like Gary Oldman. So why not? Dude, they have a lot the, the people that they cast in that film. They have like a lot of big name actors in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah, his sexy behind. Mm. Yeah, there were a lot more names in that that I recognized too. Mm. But there's like stuff like, okay, the film, I, this is not a spoiler, okay? If you can't, no, 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 all right. No, 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 so, it is not. So, the film bong, opens with a mole. Bong, it tells you that there's a mole. Bong. It tells you that there's a mole. Uh huh. And yeah. the, the uh-huh. guy in that scene, oh, whatever. All right. Uh, no, bong, no, bong. bong. Jesus. <laughs> Almost spoiled the. <laughs> no, I need the first two seconds of the film. It's exactly what you're talking about. All right, okay. anyway, do you want to go back to your other two topics? Yes, yes, please, please. All right, season one alternate endings. Oh, you switched it on the Google Docs. What's up with that? Because, well, before we recorded the show, I looked at some of the stuff I'd added, and I was like, what does that mean? And then I forgot. So, well, no, do you want to talk about your experience of the patch before we talk about all the crazy new stuff coming? It was a patch. <laughs> It was a patch, dude. That that's that's yeah. basically it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just cleaning up everything, and yeah, a little cutscene here. It wasn't. What did you think crazy. of the new lines arch layout? Um, it was fine. Uh, it, we we were trying to break out the map and stuff like that early on. Me and a friend, um, because they yeah, they, they kind of patched the, they kind of patched a lot of the stuff where he could break they out. Did. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. I I saw you you managed to get out. Yeah, we we spent ages doing that as well. Someone showed me, I, I don't know whether I talked about this on the podcast, someone showed me before this patch went live a way to break out of Lion's Arch that I'd never done before. And I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. Um, and then we did a void jump, which is where you go from under the map to somewhere really high up. Right. Um, under a very specific area. You know that house that had the force field on it? We did it under that. And it, what it did was instead of just putting you on top of the force field, it put you on top of the entire map. So you're actually walking around on top of the skybox. It was what? the most bizarre thing ever. It was crazy, dude. It was like you Did could you like, fall down? Could you fall? No, 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 no. You're walking around up there. You're like looking wow. down below. You're walking on thin air and seeing like the town. But well, you couldn't really see much because there was miasma and stuff. Anyway, he had this crazy idea that he could put his characters up there, and then when the new patch went live, you could like fall down and stuff. Anyway, he showed me that the patch came now, and obviously all of the bits of the breach maker are everywhere, and it looks different. And they actually patched that new one as well. And I was like, wow, I can't believe they did that. But there is still a very old breakout that is still on the map that me and some friends did, and we used it to jump on top of the airship in lines arch which was pretty cool it's like some nice views but there's no npcs or anything to talk about up there and yeah that's what i honestly is this the same for you is that what you've spent most of your time in lines arch doing yeah that and building my character (laughs) i have i've spent like people are like why are you spending so much money i'm spending a lot of money i was buying rune sets sigils because you have to switch everything when you're switching to different builds and stuff. You know, I had the full Zerkers. I got the Knights. I got, uh, like, all sorts of stuff to switching out to see what I enjoy most about my Guardians to try to get a little bit more damage. And now that I've seen all these changes, like, I'm I'm actually thinking about going Celestial. I know, like, some people don't like it, but I, I think having a variety of everything, it, it might work. But well, I don't know. Look, I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. In terms of the build, like Celestial can sound fun, but take it from me, is boring as hell once you get on there because you're a, you're a master of nothing and you have like no weight anywhere. Like your damage is really mediocre, really mediocre. I promise you, and your defense is mediocre. Like really, see, that, the way that Celestial it all depends on the class, though. It all depends. No, on the class, even on though. any class, like because. It doesn't matter what class you are. The gear sets that you put on that class are always going to have the same benefits and cons. So you're still going to have mediocre damage and you're still going to have mediocre defense compared to other guardians that actually take real stat sets that mean something. I promise you, please take my advice. You took my advice with the engineer thing. Take it again. Don't go celestial. <laughs> dude, 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 dude. Oh, okay, okay. You know, you, you mentioned that one. Yeah, and I, I like engineer. Um... I I haven't bought it yet because I don't want to spend any more money. But what I'm doing is I'm waiting to the patch to come out before I spend any more money. Right now I have a Knights um, combination with uh, um, Valkyrie, right? So I have a li- I have precision, toughness, and power on one gear set, and then I have vitality, um, uh, crit damage, and, and power and power on another one. So it's kind of like Berserker. 
but it, except you have more toughness and more vitality. Now, this could be like, oh, you might as well just go full damage. But I don't know. Like I, I, I'm just messing around with a bunch of stuff to see to see how it works. And I tend to like it. I tend to like it a lot. And some of these runes, man, let me tell you, so expensive. I know I should probably just use the 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 build site but i i like to feel it on my character i like to see it on my character and sometimes the build site is off by like one percent or so and it kind of annoys me i like to be like very like like okay this is the number this is the number this is the number but anyway there are some pretty good ones that don't like get broken well uh, on the on the topic of toughness i've been duoing dungeons lately just mm-hmm. me and one other guy we've been just doing the dungeons just two man right and I have found our toughness levels are really similar to each other, right? And when, for whatever reason, because of the scaling or I don't, un- don't know, sometimes I have like three more toughness than he does. Just three more toughness. And in those situations, he's a warrior and I'm an engineer, right? And in those situations, I hate running the dungeon because I grab all of the aggro from the mobs. It's like unbelievable to see in practice. And I just instantly drop while he can face tank a lot more and probably evade a bit better than I can and do all this other stuff. And like I, for this, I have come to just hate toughness. I also found that in um, PvP when I was min-maxing a full glass Zerka Ellie, that if I, I could take one defensive stat, basically toughness or vitality. And it's like, which one do you want to go for? And I found that if I took toughness, then thieves could literally one shot me. But if I took vitality, they couldn't one shot me anymore. And that was the difference between me being able to pop an invulnerability skill and not. And like, so mm-hmm. I value vitality really, really highly. Also, this is all around about way of me telling you to change your toughness stuff. Because the other thing with your toughness stuff is it's toughness major stat instead of power major stat. And that affects your damage in a pretty reasonable way so if i were because i used to do ex- exactly the setup you've got right now i used to run and then i swapped my toughness stuff for um what's it called uh Zerka's stuff so i was half Zerka's, half valkyrie and then eventually i swapped the valkyrie to Zerka's as well but it was a long progression that i slowly learned to do but yeah, yeah that's I'm exactly the, just, what i originally did i i, I keep swapping them and i have i have uh I, I was swapping it between uh, Berserker Trinkets or Berserker Armor, and I've just been testing all the damage because the damage doesn't really change too much because it's, I don't know, like, I don't know if I really like precision. Like, I, I'm okay with it. It's just, I don't know, it's going to sound very stupid coming from me with, 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 with like, oh, this is the main part of the game. You think it's stupid? It, it not. I don't really think it's stupid, but, like, it's like, man, you have to spend so much on precision just to do that more more damage basically for well, for crit damage and it's so it's so much of an investment to get a high crit damage just so you can do just so you can do the the yeah not crit damage crit chance you mean crit chance and just so you can use the crit damage and if you and if people people will try to do these builds where they have a lot of crit damage but no crit percent um, crit chance and I'm like dude like your crit all the the, the time and in, in, in spots that you're putting crit damage in is just a waste if you don't crit that much so it's like one well, of those things where you have to kind of battle between it and it all depends on how much your character hits you know if it's a ranger and he constantly spams you know of course it doesn't matter but like yeah I, I, don't I had the same opinion like I, I really didn't like um because oh, you get a choice. The difference between Valkyries and Berserkers is Valkyries gives you defense, vitality, and Zerkers gives you precision. That's the difference. So you make a, you make a choice at one point. Do I want the precision or not? I had the exact same thing, and I, I always undervalued precision. And I was like, oh, why do I want to go for this? It's kind of lame. And, you know, I'll crit just as hard anyway when I do crit. Um, but well, after I came back from PvP and I went back to PvE, I found it was really, really, really lame, and like to actually see the numbers when you're not getting the red markers coming up that much. Yeah, super annoying. The the one thing you got to consider with precision though is your crit chance isn't all in precision. People shore that up in other ways. Fury obviously is huge; it's twenty percent immediately. And like uh, if you're running with a, bo- a a warrior with a banner of discipline, then that's a huge way to boost it up as well. A lot of people the, there's a reason the most expensive food out there is precision food at the same time because these are what people shore it up with. Like and on certain classes you can then easily get it to 100 percent, and then obviously crit damage is just insane um that could be a good segue if you if you want to do talk about builds anymore then that's cool but that could be a, seg- a good segue into some of the articles the devs have been putting out yeah 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 because I, I was definitely going to talk about because um you remember how you know even when you saw the dev what is it a dev live stream ready up for guardians like they teach you how to build a guardian and they i mean basically he only showed damage guardian and yeah he did some some like um some tanky guardians but he was really talking about 
uh, damaged the whole time. Um, I don't know. I didn't really find it that useful. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know... Well, you're an experienced player, aren't you? I mean, these are not for people already playing Guild of Two. Let's yeah, be honest. Tr- tr- true, true. But he's teaching them not like everything. Like he's just teaching him like, like oh, here's a one build. He like he didn't even switch his build. And if it kind of annoyed me, I'm like, don't teach him just this. Like they, oh my gosh, they're gonna hate. Wait, the one build, he, the one build he taught them was DPS. Was it just the way that it did DPS that annoyed you, or the fact? Um, no, like, no, why it would was, you no, the fact that it was one. Tanky? No, 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 not that. Not the, the fact that he only chose one DPS. Zerkers and this, the max amount of damage you can get with the Guardian. That and sounds that, fine to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. That yeah, because like you're an elitist. You that's why. And oh, because damage is everything. Because it's the best everything. way to play the game. There is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with elitism either. Yes, there's it wrong is. With being a, a, yes, there's, it there's, is. There's something wrong with being a douche. Okay, but that I wouldn't argue is the same thing. Expelling people from groups because, like, being just a completely mean about the way you're saying, oh, no, you can't run with us or stuff like that, then that's a bit out of order. But there is nothing wrong with having the opinion that you should Really? I, I can remember can. me not being able to play PvP with you. What is this? Elitist! Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah but that, I, I don't disagree with that. I think I was well within my rights to be like... And, oh, come on, we can't keep saying this. Like, I wasn't, like... Forcing you to not play PvP Everyone, with... Everyone, winning potatoes is actually a douche in real life. Wow. Well, so, wow. you know, soak that in. You know? Matt really doesn't like the fact that I, I like people I, no, to, you know... No, I, I, I respect it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That, that live stream I'm just saying, I just want, I just want duels. Me. I just want to do duels so I can kick your behind in PvE. Okay. And it will it will happen. When deals come out, I will be kicking your butt. And I'll show okay. you. I'm, I'm, I, you know what I'm gonna do? It. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a handicap. I'm gonna use healing power, and I'm gonna kick. Are we serious? I, I, I'm calling. I'm calling out like this. This is it. Everyone, hold me accountable. I'm saying. Well, you, maybe, you're maybe gonna I, kill me with a healing power build when Jules come out. <laughs> <in PvE. laughs> oh my god! Not. People should. People should take not. bets. I'm, yeah. Dude, dude, dude. I'm probably not. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways. Um. Right. So uh, what I saw, right, a little well, when I was looking at the changes for Guardian, um, was I uh, remember when we were I know, saying like, I wrote oh, this down. yeah, yeah. It was like, oh, so it's like because I was like, oh man, Zerkers is always damn Zerkers. Why do I have to be Zerkers, uh, to to get the you know the damage out? You know, like the equivalent of you know being a damage user basically as a Guardian. But they said they're actually with the new uh, Grandmaster traits, they're gonna actually buff up some of the burning damage for guardian they, they kind of yeah, hinted they did, that yeah. way and i was like oh okay i don't know if i'll still use it, it depends it's just like oh guardians can now do damage because now you get a five percent increase to great swords like no 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 you just made it convenient to, to to go for it that doesn't mean like you know like yeah, all of a sudden we have a bunch of damage because we have five percent increase but yeah like this might be significant um they get, that, they're, that, they're that really burning promote- things, huh? It's, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. They, go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of burns on Guardian. A lot, like constant burns, and that's why basically most of the the traits are ten percent when a a foe is has a a, um, a condition on them. Ten percent while foes are burning. Ten percent, and of course, there's boon duration and all that type of stuff. I mean, boons on you do more damage. One uh, percent each boon. Um, but yes. Yeah, yeah, there, there's a lot of changes for survivability. You saw that, right? For everyone, yeah, well, pretty much. Yeah, on, on the burning thing, I just wanted to say, like, this could be a really interesting thing that comes to Guild Wars 2. Currently, only some classes can be Condi Specs, and the reason why they're Condi Specs, I mean, effective Condi Specs, the reason why they're those <laughs> classes is because they have abilities that comply a wide range of conditions. Like, that's what your class needs. It doesn't, like, for example, Elementalists. You don't run Condi Ellie. Some people will say, oh, I've got an amazing one. They're wrong, right? The reason why you don't run a Condi Ellie is because it has very little access to a wide range of conditions, right? And this is, like, the primary thing that shoots most classes in the leg. However, with the suggestion that they're adding a trait that, like, makes burning somehow really good from Guardians, burning is Guardians' thing, but they don't run Condi Specs because they only get burning. But if this trait somehow, you know, ups that damage so high that it's, it's you know... equivalent it's to, like, uh, Engineer. A, a, whole re- a whole range or something. Yeah. And, yeah, cleanses are going to be different, but they do have so many ways of reapplying burning. We might, for the first time, see a Guild Wars 2 class that can play viable Condi, not necessarily in dungeons and stuff like that, but viable Condi 
with um, a very little comedy range. And that could be really cool. It puts a lot of pressure on what that Grandmaster is and how they design it. Like, how do they do it? Do they make it tick more times per second, depending on your hmm. condition damage set or stuff? I, I don't know, but that, that might be, be really, really cool. That that would probably be the best thing, if. but I'm pretty sure they won't do that because I think that might be, you know, people might complain about that. But that would be good because... If it takes a little bit more seconds, it, it guarantees damage instead of people just clearing it and then, you know, it all because it it's does. It's only pulsed once. Yeah. When, yeah, yeah it even though like it's a, a lot of damage. A second to the second pulse. Right. Yeah. If they decide to go like the up damage route, you know. So, it's, I mean, it depends. They could balance it each way. You know, it does so much damage that it doesn't even matter if it takes a, a couple times or whatever like that. But, um,. But if you, man, if you go full on into condition damage and it just goes way high, that would There's be quite weird ridiculous. About, you know your great sword four as well that throws a binding blade at someone? Yeah. Yeah, and then you can activate again to pull them in. That binding blade Five. ticks damage over time, and that damage actually scales with condition damage. It's not technically a condition, but Condi damage guardians can actually use that as an extra Condi in a weird way. And I think the base damage on it as a Condi is quite high too. So, like, that would be really weird. Like, a guardian that runs Condi damage somehow in their spec and is also using great sword to get the extra tick. Because that's like an uncleansable Condi too. It's weird stuff, man. It could make some interesting builds. I am, I am super, super excited. I, you know, I, I, I was already expecting a lot of the stuff that came out today, but at least this, the blog post that was released was it was yesterday, yesterday mm-hmm. when this was released, with uh, the traits being able to reset anywhere. <gasps> well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go through the the like the days like one at a time. So currently we're talking about. Um, what were we talking about? We're, we're, the tra- we're, you were just talking about traits general unleashed. balance changes. 40 okay, right, we'll traits 40 new traits and more. 40 new traits and more. So basically every class and every tier, I guess you call them, every column, like honor, valor, whatever for the guardian, gets a new grandmaster trait. And that's for every single class. So that's cool. That is cool. So, you know, it's more incentivizing to go full on into one um, one row. And What's I, a line you've always ignored? Yeah. Um, what, 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 what is one? That is always ignored in mind? Yeah, that you never use as a guardian. Never, never use none, but like full on? Like all the way? Yeah, what don't you go all the way in as a line? Um... I, I, for me, I'm not talking for all guardians. Don't freaking flame me, <laughs> uh, Jesus. Some. Oh, right. you're so bad. I, I do it preemptively. I you're don't so use, bad. This line's amazing. I don't <laughs> use uh, 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 toughness crit, which is I think is valor. I don't use that all the way. Um, I only, I mean, I only do like ten in them, maybe. And even then, I, I tend to not do it sometimes. Sometimes I go in there for the extra precision lately uh, for, to gain more precision or um, for tanky, tanky specs uh, to help other players with the extra 150 toughness in that trade as well. Um, a good 10 or 20 in there, you know, you know, it's pretty good. But going full on five, yes, there's that trait that does like, oh, you can heal allies with, with, uh, with uh, shouts. But it's like, eh. I don't want to, it, this, there's no support for that, you know, it's just like, eh, it's, it's not enough healing uh, to do that, even though it, it's cool and all, it's like sacrifice, you sacrifice so much when you pick these three traits that you go in, you sacrifice mm-hmm. so much, so it's like healing power, what are you sacrificing, you sacrifice more damage or more tankiness for healing power, now if the Guardian's, um, you know, healing power stacks very well, or scales very well, then, you know, and you could constantly heal over and over again, then sure, but, like, I don't know, it's so many ways to think about it, but, um, yeah, that, and maybe full-on in power, full-on in power doesn't really give you anything, especially because the great sword skill is in, uh, the major trait, instead of the grandmaster, it got moved down and added to the great sword heals you and stuff like that, so mm-hmm. I mean, th- th- there's there's some stuff in there like oh, uh, spirit weapons give you fifty percent more, and they you know they do fifty percent more damage and stuff like that. But, eh, spirit weapons is not very my thing. I'm I'm not really into the spirit weapon thing. So we talked about that before. Like when the, do you remember when those fake patch notes came out suggesting that they were going to become invulnerable again, mm-hmm. like they were at launch? And I was like, oh, that could be really cool. But yeah, like the I know at least one of the grandmasters up there is a spirit weapon related one, isn't it? It's like. Oh, they do more damage or they proc their thing when they die, stuff like that. Right. But yeah, so there are lines that you never go in. And what this change means is that 
the new grand each one of those will now have a new grandmaster and potential incentive to actually um use that line for the first time ever like me as an ellie i've i've dabbled with the grandmasters and all of them but i think most people can agree going max into fire for a lot of content is kind of lame you know if you're running a certain staff build then you'd like to do it but otherwise meh and there's also um a lot of people have been saying the revealed grandmaster for water magic which is aquatic uh, acromancy or whatever it is um which gives which boosts your healing power stat by 25 percent for everyone around you that um that trait a lot of people say oh it's kind of rubbish and i agree that it's not that amazing but one thing i would point out is i was recently trying to do a heal power staff ellie and you want to go 30 in water so that you can get loads of healing power and stuff um but there's actually no appropriate grand master there at the moment there's aura share which you only really get for from the um uh, Earth 3, and then there's uh, the Condi Cleanse one, which actually isn't that amazing for PvE, so there's not an, uh, there's not an incredible um, slot there, but now this new Grand Master actually is a good slot for that role. So, like, I think that they probably have thought about quite a lot with putting these new Grand Masters in. It's just we only got one revealed. Like, a lot of people were saying... So, do you want to talk about the Guardian revealed one? Uh, do you remember sure. what it was? Yeah, yeah, basically you get 3k health uh, and the honor. Think? Which I... I think... <sighs> I, th I mean, I I'm not gonna say that they there's th there's already so much there in that uh in that tree. Like a lot of people go full honor a lot because it's it's just really good stuff at the end. Like um converting you know one boon into I mean one condition into a boon. You know that's really useful for curing conditions. And if you're running like soldier runes and stuff like that, and you can just stack all of that. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, it, there's already good stuff in there. Like, I felt like, I guess, if someone wanted to go full-on tanky, because it seems like the theme of, of what they've been showing us uh, with the last two full, like, four blogs is survivability, more survivability, and, you know, 10% um, minus on crit damage and kind of want to bring more support into the mix now. And because, you know, their philosophy was, like, build diversity. Everyone should, you know, everything is about damage. They want to kind of spread it out a little bit more, mm -hmm. right? So it seems like they're trying to go for this whole tanky or, well, they call it survivability, but, like, tankiness. And I don't know if 3K, I don't know if I would take the trait personally. I feel like, yeah, I, I think, think I you could just dodge. I, yeah, I think you could just dodge. Just dodge. You know, like it's the shout removed condition is way more important or if you want to use the um, uh the passive skill is for everyone where you could regenerate everyone's health if they're right next to you like this i mean i don't know i i i, th I think it's a valid opinion i think it's also a lot of people will probably look at this as oh arena are dumb for doing this because it's clearly something no, no one would ever want to take but in a lot of ways i think it might be a blessing in disguise everyone al you just said it yourself everyone always already goes in that line like why add another grandmaster that's even more incentive to go in that line if they're trying to encourage build diversity so right. you know this could be like one of the weakest gra guardian grandmasters that's going into the game and um it's in the line that's already most incentivized and so now with the other lines this is actually perhaps a positive thing because it means you might want to try another line to to go full into in the future because I, I definitely would like to go uh full on in my precision line um and and because i usually go 25 the most because it gets you that 10 percent on you know if a foe has conditions on them so it gives you mm -hmm. an extra 10 percent and stacks with everything else but there's no really point to go full on into it so i wonder like what they would add there maybe hopefully they'll add that new burning skill to it because that would well, be it, that will well probably go in the Condi line. Is it Precision and Condi? Or yeah, yeah. Guardian. Yeah. yeah. So that could be in there then. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the one that they end up choosing. Yeah, for so sure. Yeah, well, all right. So on top of traits as well, they're adding new traits. Is that the bit that captured your excitement most? Would you say just the resetting the traits anytime you want? And you know, um, I I think. I think it was weird the way they did the skills now, where it's like you don't put one point anymore; you put five points, and you just get it later on. Um, so mm -hmm. you can just put five because you know there's no point in putting one point in. Basically, to help new players, uh, you know, know how to work their build. Because if they put like eleven in power and you know six in in uh in um I don't know, precision and 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 condition or whatever, you know, it's a little bit weird. It doesn't really help help you so how dumb do you have to be seriously now i just want to hey, talk about this for a second oh my gosh. how dumb do you have to be to do that oh my gosh elitist when potatoes coming out again uh, no seriously how though because like 
It's so obvious on your trait page. Oh, I'm getting one. If I take this one point out of here and put it in here, look, I get all this extra stuff. Look, it's just, it boggles my mind. I can't believe they're Kate. Like, the full reason why they're doing it isn't just to cater to people who accidentally do this, I'm sure. It's like, uh, don't you think just one of the best things about this is you have to click less? Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm to go for this Grandmaster, and you're like, click, 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 click. Either that, or you just go immediately to the Major you want to pick and do it. But I just think they're sort of cutting the fat out a little bit. That's, like, quite minor, I think, over everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it makes levelling a bit more fun as well, because you don't get oomph at level 80 at the moment, but now you will, because you unlock your Grandmasters, and the Grandmasters mean so much for your build. Wow, yeah, that, like, that's, that's, it's, uh, that's pretty tough, though. <laughs> that's pretty tough to think about. It's going to be, leveling is going to be a lot more harder. I really hope they they make leveling um, a little bit better well, as well with the yeah, new yeah, blog well, post that coming out. Again, like last week, we were you, you were just saying, you were talking about um, that guy's video. He was like, oh, one of the things about Guild Wars 2 is it's a hard game. Like, this actually reinstates that a little bit if it's a little bit harder to, you know, go through a level and it's, you know, you don't get everything on a plate for you instantly. It's, you know, it could be seen as a positive thing for new players. Content's a bit more engaging than just face rolling through everything I because you got your Grandmaster super early. I want to say it's positive um, for people who are just getting in, but it could be beneficial for people learning the game more. So when mm-hmm. they get up to and 80, all, so it means it. something when they get up to 80. Instead of it being like, oh, I'm 80, you know? And I don't know how to dodge still, because I've just been <laughs> face, you know, face tanking everything as a as a thief. You know, or, or, or I found a great equivalent for that. Like you know, uh, it's it's funny. Like it almost seems crazy. Like it's half a joke for us to say, "Oh, people could, don't know how to dodge at level 80. But here's something crazy. You know, I was playing Path of Exile. Mm-hmm. Here's the equivalent that I did in Poe. I didn't realize you could weapon swap. Yeah. Like, and I'm on my second playthrough of the game. Like, and I didn't realize you could do that. You're on your second this whole... playthrough? Yeah, what? I'm like level 50 something. And I never knew you could do it. Like, and this is exactly the same for Guild Wars 2. I'm sure there are people out there who just didn't know they could dodge. I'm sure, because it's like a keybind they never realized existed. They didn't realize they could click that part of the UI. It's not going to be that common. No, it's, it's not going to be that common and, because you know, because it's right there in the UI. Like the the UI system, you see it right above your health bar. Wait, well, that people could just think it's like a fancy little, you know, effect above the health bar. Right, with two bars, right? Yeah, like mm-hmm. well, the the UI is cluttered enough, dude, with random black borders around everywhere and flares and fire and stuff coming off that's unnecessary. <laughs> I'm not saying it's common and it's easy to do, but I'm sure there are people who never dodged. I'm sure. What you have to do is miss that tooltip the first time. And that's Maybe it. they keep prompting it until you do funny. Dodge. Maybe their mom yeah, called them like randomly it. to for dinner time, or they're on like their sister's account or something, and um, they uh, missed all that stuff earlier. And they and they go for a, a level forty fractal, and <laughs> not knowing how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, I've done that before. That was fun. That was I fun. finally started doing fractals. I after the patch where they added the instabilities, I never actually did any fractals at all. I know I haven't experienced the instabilities, but I've just started doing them again, which is pretty fun. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's not that is it the 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 annoying thing is like I I got into a party where everyone was like, all right, let's go, and I wanted to do it on my warrior, and um, it was just ridiculous. Like the everything I had to go through, all these hoops I had to jump through to get some ascended stuff, and then buy the new infusion system and get through and like upgrade my rings. But I had to downscale some of my shards of essence so that I could get globs. So that I could, oh my god, it was nuts! Like these people were just sat there waiting for me for ages as I'm faffing about. D- just to clarify, before we move on to the next blog post, um, you can change your build at any time. There's gonna be minus and plus signs on your build. Just like the mm-hmm. build website, and you can just click, oh, I don't want five points in this, and you can change it at any time when you're out of combat. That is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. What do you I, think about doing that in dungeons? Absolutely good. Good, good. because because y- you'll be able to switch your gear in dungeons as well. So if you... If, making if, dungeons easier? Making dungeons easier. Oh, well, I don't know if it's easier but like you'll be able to change the diversity i think it's good i think it's awesome because you'll probably be able to, i mean yeah yeah it's it's good i i think it's overall a good thing yeah it, it, thing. Excite, it excites me as a player that you can do that i do worry though that it will trivialize dungeons because you can just change absolutely everything about the way you play but you why know, you you'll learn how to play the game a lot better instead of having to go keep going back and plus if someone goes into the dungeon and they have a terrible build you can teach them a better build 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, they can just do it. They can just, yeah. just do it. Like, oh no, dude, don't don't go ten points into that. Try this. Try this. Oh yeah, is that better? Right? It 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 it, it in. I don't know, it, more social stuff going on with that. Like, you could constantly change. You don't have to go all the way to Lion's Arch. Well, not Lion's Arch anymore. The, the visual keep to, to change. Well, the visual keep doesn't one have the, one either, actually. One of the, Yeah, it doesn't. You've got to go to the main cities. One of the, the things that's always been a little bit annoying when doing, like, Worm and Tech and stuff when they come out is build is the cheapest thing you can change and also has one of the biggest impacts on the damage that you're doing and, you know, the way that your character functions. So when you've got a huge Zerg of a load of newbies and random people that you want to be on good build so that they can contribute well to do this really difficult stuff, the f- number one thing you want to tell them to do is change their build. But a lot of people don't like doing that because it means they have to waypoint out of the map mm-hmm. and then they won't necessarily right. get back in because of the crappy overflow system. But now with this, like that will make that much, much easier. That's going to be a huge weight lifted off of a lot of people. <laughs> Gear obviously is still going to be a bit of an issue, but at least you can summon a trading post to, to, to you. And if people want to spend the money, then they can do it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the change anywhere thing. I'm very curious about its implications in dungeons and fractals though, because I think, um, that's when the legendary armor comes on some in. fundamental level in me, I feel like that content should be, you set your group up with a specific setup that you've theory crafted and build crafted out. That's a big part of the fun of it. And then you put it to the test and see whether it can make it. Way but that's the not how just... everyone plays games though. You play it yeah, that well, way. That... No, 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 that's not, that doesn't happen in Guild Wars 2 anyway, because four out of the five people can just leave the instance anyway as it stands and go to a retreat and go back in the dungeon. This just cuts that away. But it's like the game has been moved, I believe that the game was sort of originally like that, and then it's moved further and further away until it's just not an element anymore. It's the same as like repairing your armor. There is no, oh, we kept failing through the dungeon, now all of our armor's broken, it's impossible, we've got to restart. Now it's just, oh, just go out, you know, pop a repair canister, go leave, go repair, come back in, you know, that's just not a part of Guild Wars 2 anymore. And, um, you know, I guess this is the final nail in that. And I think it, it's like I said, I do agree with it. I think it's going to be pretty fun. But it's very curious how, how like, dungeon experience is going to change for it. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it'll be that bad. I, I think the pros outweigh the cons for sure, for sure, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Um, I also want to say, uh, with this, with Legendary Armor, it's going to be amazing, even if we ever get that. But, some people were kind of confused when every time I talked about legendary armor, like it wasn't coming or it was a different tier. Why do I want a different tier? Legendary armor is not a different tier, my friend. Legendary is just like legendary, my legendary great sword sunrise. It's on the highest tier, which is ascended. There's no difference between ascended and my legendary great sword. Except you can change the stats. Except you can change the stats. That is the only thing. That you can do with legendary armor that is different from anything else. It is not a gear progression. It is not a gear progress. I have to, I have to I have to repeat myself because people just don't understand. Uh so and and just to confirm it, I actually talked with Colin Johansson, right? In that interview, you can actually go back and watch that. Oh my god, I thought interview. you were gonna be like this week. I just had a chat with Colin. No, I was like, no. what? Yeah, yeah right, dude. I, I would love to chat with that guy again. He's a he's a cool guy. Um, a lot of the devs are really cool, down to earth people. Um, he, he actually said that they were working on trinkets. They were thinking about adding trinkets first, uh, mm-hmm. for legendaries. So yes, it is coming. Okay, just just probably not now. We don't even have the uh, the just to announce. You're not gonna get precursor, precursor scavenger yeah. hunt. You're not gonna get a precursor hunt. It's it's not in this feature patch. They Maybe said in the next one. Yeah, it gonna happen. yeah, and uh, in on the forums. So just wanna throw that out there. Man, uh, they should have. I think they've handled that pretty badly. <laughs> really badly. Really. That's probably badly. one of the worst things, like communication-wise, that they've done with the community. Constantly telling people for well over a year now, almost a year and a half, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and it's clearly not been coming the entire time. I don't know if there's some guy that they're paying who has been working on that full time for a year and a half and still has nothing to show for it. They need to fire that dude. There clearly Seriously. isn't the case. Or they girl. haven't been working on it. Or I think and, it was you know, a girl. The, the day that the team that was originally maybe set up to do it decided, oh, maybe we shouldn't because we want to do ascended craft and stuff like this. The second that that team sort of backed away, they should have just put out a little announcement saying, um, "Precursor uh, Hunt is is on is on hold for a second because we want to see how it lines up with other features in the game." Sorry about this, but we thought you should know. Go ahead and roll for one or, or try and buy one off the TP. Don't bother waiting. You know, I got my first legendary about a year ago from now, and. Back then, I'd been holding off waiting because mm-hmm. I thought that the precursor comp was coming. So it's just ridiculous. There is another thing on the traits thing that, this, like, you like the reset thing the most, would you say? 
Yeah. All the new traits? Um, The new traits and the reset is what I'm most excited about. It makes me want the patch now. And also the traits, you're going to be able to explore like around this the world. This is what I'm most excited about. Yeah. yeah this, so do you want to talk about that? What do you think of that? Yeah, I think it's good. So what it says in the blog post is basically um, they're adding new ways for you to get rewarded when you're exploring inside of the world, right? And they're, I don't know if they're going to do it for this trait. I don't know if they figured that out yet. They're kind of like, uh, we don't know yet. But some of the traits might be able to be unlocked but just by playing the game. Right, just like how we were thinking about, like, oh, it would be nice if we to 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 unlock master or grandmaster. We had to do a quest. Well, I think this is what they're gonna kind of do, um, mm -hmm. in a way for uh, grandmaster traits. So you can actually go out there, kind of like what happened in Guild Wars One, where you had to do that to get skills. It's gonna be kind of the same thing for grandmaster traits, which I'm I'm actually pretty excited about. Well, especially all traits. It's all traits. It's all traits. All traits. Yeah, all traits are locked. You you can go ten points in a line, but you won't be able to assign anything for that to to that slot because they're all locked. However, so and and a little bit of quick math for, for people: there are twelve traits to choose in a line. There are five lines per character, so five times twelve, and then there are eight classes. It puts you over five hundred different traits in the game, and all those traits are now going to be like out in the world somewhere so by finding a certain point of interest you might unlock a trait by finishing a bit of the person's story you might unlock a trait and for grandmaster traits yeah it could be more difficult stuff it could be completing full metas and stuff like Whoa. that's how they're doing it yeah well okay and now Whoa. i know what you're thinking i know what you're thinking now you're like oh man well, i don't it, uh, well I, that sounds know, like a hassle for new it, no for new players i they would love it that i yeah if well, it was in there from the beginning at launch no one would i don't know would people care well, I think people might have cared. People would love it. People would think, think that that's way better than just randomly getting yeah, them in your UI. I think so as well. I think so as well. But I think some people might not like that because, and and people might have complained because about it. Because they have to play the game. Because they have to, to get the stuff. Because they have to play the game. Yeah. It's so stupid, man. It, um, but what I was going to say is, um, they have confirmed that this stuff is being applied retroactively. So think about your guardian right now. He's already finished his, his personal story. So how is he going to get all the traits for completing the personal story? Well, the answer is he just has them automatically. Mm -hmm. So if you have like world completion and personal story done, you've probably got all the traits already except for the new ones. So the new grandmasters they add, you will be able to go out in the world and, and find for yourself. All right. So the grandmasters and, and are the ones that are locked. That's the ones I was talking about. So the grand yeah, for, for existing characters. But if you make a new character, and I really want to make a new character now, dude. Like, I hope they release a new race. Yeah, new release a new race, please. Oh, that would, would be so cool, dude. Dude, if they release Tengu right now, dude. Let oh my gosh, the the amount of of sure uh, a a a dopamine a dopamine. What was it that, that drug that's released into your brain when you, dopamine a dopamine? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just uh, okay. I'll just get a high and I'll start jittering. <laughs> oh my gosh, it would be, a, dude, 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 <laughs> ranger all the way because you've seen the ranger trait, right? For the longbow, you're gonna get the attack what twice as fast? It's ridiculous. Like everyone's gonna roll the ranger after this after this patch. Well, I was speaking to some rangers who were like, "Oh, this looks really lame." And they were like, "Oh, this well, that's what sucks. that's the only thing rangers do anyway." It's wow. just spam their bow. That's all they do. Every time I'm in World of the World, they just spam their bow. And then I just go up there and stun them and bust my my grenades all over them, dude, and just destroy them. Oh, I hate, I hate rangers. They just sit there with a the stupid pet stunning me. Ah, oh, such an easy on the, class. On the <laughs> idea of um, Tengu coming, yeah. So the de the devs put out a web page that lists all the articles that are upcoming. We've had four already: runes, crit damage, traits unleashed, and just the announcement, right? So if Tengu are coming, which of these blog posts do you think would be the one to announce it? Okay. New way to explore the looks of Guild Wars Two. A colorful outlook. Looking for group. Removing restrictions. Account bound. A solid foundation. Facilitating friendly play. Facilitating friendly play part two and part three. Do you think any of those would announce Tengu? Which is the most likely? Which is the most likely? Let me see. Uh, oh, man. Um, 
a solid foundation they could they could say okay now that's that we have the, the personal story now now that we have a salad a solid foundation of oh. what you know what our, of our um how the, the you know the quality of life fixes or the bug fix, fixes the way we do the traits now and everything like that now that we have fixed all the problems except for the scavenger hunt now we can release a new race like yeah, that, yeah. that 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 could that could I'm saying that could be it. So you consider as well the the one called Rune Sigils and Balance Update before today, that had a completely different name. It was just called like the Combat of Guild Wars Two or something. So some of these other ones could change their names as well as we go forward. Right. What do you think of the facilitating friendly play one? They've got three articles on that. What can they possibly be talking about? Because it sounds like a boring topic, doesn't it? Pr- probably, probably you know fixing players like you probably. <laughs> okay. What, what about it? I'm just playing. Um, you say you, uh, I, it really warms me up. <laughs> really warms me up. I'm, I don't I'm just run joking. around uh, shouting me, at people come, in come, game. I'm come, not a mean person. Come, come here. Let me give you a kiss. I'm, you know I'm just joking. Come here. Come here. Oh, there we go. There we go. A nice one on I the like cheek. how you didn't do the kiss noise back like it disgusted you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah, you gave me a kiss first. You kind of jumped the gun. I was like, oh, okay. You know. Wow. So, well, oh. Whatever. Yeah. Showing my eagerness there. I, Whoops. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Like, I think it might have to do a lot with the social aspect. Maybe they're adding some stuff to like uh, the world. Maybe, uh, maybe some dynamic events while you're leveling. May- maybe something like that. Um, but I don't. I could. I don't know. I don't know. It probably has a lot to do with dungeons as well. Uh, how they rework well, some of the dungeons. To me, like. Um this sounds like facilitating friendly play. Like, you know, I've talked about a lot that that whole idea that the game, everyone has to be friends with one another. This is why we don't have dueling and everybody's always got to be on the same page. You know, that general idea. It sounds to me like they're just going more into that idea. And, you know, that is what's fueled most of the cool things in Guild Wars 2. Like there is no loot co- competition and there is no rolling for stuff. You know, you always view other people as friends. And I think that could be what it is. And like they're trying to push that even further. My my main hope is them saying, no, look, we think we were wrong about this. Here, look, have dueling and have, you know, opposing factions and go to war with one another in the open world and stuff like that. Is but that a not, thing? Not that's the reason why they don't have dueling? You think that's that's the that's the reason why? Yeah, what? The, they, the, they want everyone to view each other as friends. I'm sure it is. That's Because otherwise, it's such a dumb. basic feature. It's such a basic feature to put in the game. It's not the reason is definitely not. Oh, this costs too much dev time. You know, it was too hard to do. They made a decision at one point. Do we have dueling? Do we make it a priority to develop? And they will have turned around and said no. Why? Because we don't want people to be, you know, competing against each other. We've got world versus world, and we've got competitive PvP. Those are the formats for that. And PVE, everyone should be happy-go-lucky friends. It's all about uniting together as all the races and <laughs> fighting. Against yeah. The dragon. Have you seen map chat? I don't think that's happening. Well, obviously they can't you know, <laughs> force a community to be nice to one another, but right, right, right. that's like the theme of the game. Like that is, And I'm sure that's what will have happened early on in, in development of it, and why we still don't have dueling, why they still don't make it a priority for themselves, because it's not in keeping with their original ideas for Guild Wars 2's PvE world. And anyway, facilitating friendly play sounds like more discussion on that topic, and maybe further refinements to their ideas there, and more features that... Do it. By, friendly by the way, uh, account bound and removing restrictions looks pretty tasty. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, and it better not yeah, be something. Yeah. It better not be something that we already heard of, like uh, World of the World being a account bound and stuff like that. It better be something that we have not heard of. Like, what? Like, what do you think if they're just like there is no su- no no such thing as soul bound anymore? Everything is account bound, and we're changing the terminology. Soul bound now means account bound because it's more like law friendly or whatever. Would you be happy with that? There's no more soulbound. Only a that would be amazing. I mean, I don't. I mean, me. I don't think it. I don't think it ruins the game. I think it's you're spending money on it, but they 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 probably want you to be able to spend money on different gear sets for each. Like if you have a guardian, then you have a warrior. Then you could if you could use the same berserker set for your guardian that you have for your warrior then you won't buy the the set but it also would make it alt friendly if they do do that whole account bound thing so mm-hmm. it might you know and you know people might be happy with that if they haven't spent like a billion dollars on getting different sets for each character like i have um, here's a, here's a question i've got for you right mm-hmm. people say that guild wars 2 um is like really un alt friendly and i wonder how that compares to other mmos um, 
How does it compare to... I think it's around... Because around... I, I've sort of had the impression no MMO is particularly alt-friendly. I... No, I think Guild Wars 2 is pretty decently alt-friendly compared to other MMOs that right. I've played. Um, it's actually not that bad. I think a lot of... A lot of people who play Guild Wars 2 have not played MMOs. Yeah, and they have all these unrealistic expectations of what yeah, it should. Yeah, they, they're thinking of it as some type of single-player experience, and and a lot of people who wanted that hardcore MMO feeling kind of left, right? And they, yeah. they're, kind of, they're mm. kind of waiting for ESO, or most people are waiting for Wildstar. A lot of the big names, well, not big names, but a lot of people who were like very invested and had websites mm-hmm. on Guild Wars 2, a lot of them kind of died off because they stopped playing the game because it wasn't... There wasn't anything to do when it comes down to the hardcore, you know, um, getting gear and getting rewards and stuff like that. Because the rewards is not the same as rewards in other games when it comes down to Guild Wars 2. So, yeah, I mean, I, to- yeah. I totally got sidetracked. Well, but we yeah. were talking about being alt friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely think Guild Wars 2 is pretty decently alt friendly. But, I mean, it would be great... Because that it has such a casual audience, um, not everyone, but anyway. like a lot of them are casual audiences and they, they kind of want the freedom and you might as well give it to them because really like they don't, a lot of them don't get a lot of gold. They don't farm. Only those hardcore Guild Wars 2 guys who want well, everything really in the game. It doesn't really solve anything, does it? If you think about it, because they don't play solve. anyway and then you give it to them on a plate and then they don't play anyway. Well, the thing is, think about it this way: if 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 they didn't make another character, this casual person um, didn't make another character just because it was um, it wasn't all friendly, right? But now account bound, everything's account bound, right? And you had a warrior, right? And you had zerkers, of course, because every guardian, or every warrior has a has a zerkers. Um, and then you're like, okay, you know, let me try guardian since I like the whole, you know, I, you know, a more tankier class not a tankier class but a more supporty class uh, other than no other than warrior even though the warrior has support stuff J- just i'm just saying this as an example because it, they, they both have um uh heavy gear then they choose a guardian they level it up and then they're level 80 and they're like just transfer all the armor from their warrior over to the guardian to try it out well the question and then and then they, they try it out and they're casual and they get bored and they leave so the question is is it better to encourage people to play just to get to 80 or is it better to um encourage them to you know spend all that time working for a new set of ascended and i would argue keeping it soul bound and getting them to go for another set of ascended would keep them in the game longer and you know keep therefore i don't th- this whole concept it, like you it's, it's contradicting keeping them in the game you might as well have a gear treadmill you see what i'm saying no, well, they, if they don't enjoy picking, that then there, there's two things there's like it's either you're casual or you're doing the gear thing like there's like i don't there, agree with that there, there's a well you, you well there has to be a balance between them you might as well just go full-on like a i think bound. you can play this game without a gear treadmill i think some no, players no. really don't like it no, 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 no i'm not saying add a gear treadmill that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if there's no gear trend mode, like, and there's a lot of casuals that play it, it, you want them to be able to do other characters because they will spend more money buying, you know, stuff for their other characters. Yeah, and I'm saying, yeah, I agree with you. Like real and cash, if you make, not, if not you gold. Make, if you make everything account bound, then they might try another character, but then they'll hit their statistical cap with that Buy character. XP they'll be boost. done with everything. Buy XP boost, which is. You know, so you don't understand. They oh, so you're saying that if it's not account bound, there's a lot of people who don't even start to make second characters. Yes, there's a there's people like that. There's people like that who basically they will just stay in one character. They won't spend mm. any money, any money on another character. I'm telling you, it, it's good to have different views. Obviously, that's the whole point. But I'm just saying, like, that's for pretty me, interesting. I'd love to see the, like. Trust me, trust me. People are really going to comment out. down below that they, they they don't go for other characters just because they might level up to 80, but they don't spend gear on it because of this, you know? Yeah, I think most people, if they wanted to play another character, they'd at least go to level 80, at yeah. least. And yeah. in that situation, making everything account bound does nothing. It just gives them everything on a platter. And then it's like, oh. But when if everything's soul bound, at least when they get to 80, they have that choice of sticking about to get, you know their full ascended set or exotic mm-hmm. set or whatever they want 
It's Can a I? weird thing because even then they still have to gain gold by doing stuff. They still have to run dungeons or whatever people do for for gold these days. Worldly world, blah blah. They still have to have gold to to buy it. You know, you can't get it just by playing unless you just do dungeons over and over again. Or them real world monies. Or them real world monies. Um. So I mean, they could be cutting off uh potential money if they. If they do, do here's, here's an idea, right? You, uh, do you want to talk about? Do you know what they're doing with die? Um, no, I didn't read too much into it. Uh, that's the data mining, right? Um, a, a little bit, I think, but also there's been actual announcements on what's going on. Uh, so in in the Chinese uh, beta at the moment, the way that dies work, um, and I'm a little bit foggy on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty on the ball with it, right? Is you know how in Guild Wars you get a, dies a character band, not account band, right? Well, mm-hmm. in the Chinese client. Um, if you get a die, it's character bound, but you can like do this thing to it that gives you a very low chance of either destroying it or making it account bound, something like that, right? Whoa. So like through RNG, you can keep rolling the dice and maybe finally get that that die as an account bound die. And they're talking about this could come to our client as well, a way of getting account bound die. And the way it, it it's done through is through RNG, or you know if you get really really lucky, you can do it. That's scary. RNG, more RNG, and it gets destroyed. Ah! Oh! I don't know. Okay, okay. I don't know whether it gets destroyed. I'm not 100 percent sure on the process of, of how that oh, works. Well, but I, I know mean, that it's wh- RNG. There has to be a negative. It's either is either the negative would be that you buy an item to roll on the die, there you go. and and then that item would get like destroyed potentially um, okay. without giving you it account bound, okay. or it might destroy the die as well. I don't know the, the specifics, but well, well, my question to you was, what do you think of an idea like this of through RNG, being able to upgrade a soulbound item to an account bound item for gear as well. What if that is the solution to the account bound problem? You don't just give it to people; you make them jump through a hoop for it, and then it's like, okay, so I've got my, you've got your legendary, and it's uh, it's soulbound, and let's ignore the idea of it destroying the legendary. And but there's this thing you can do in game where if you get lucky, you can make it account bound. Sh- sure, sh- you're you're paying money for it. Is this gold or gems? Well, what would be the implementation you're happy with? No, gems gems with RNG doesn't make people happy. I it That's true. It doesn't mm-hmm. make people happy. So if if you had that it would have to be gold. Now, the way I I said this a long a long time ago when I was talking about Maple Story. In Maple Story, you have these scissors that you can cut an item that was soul bound and make it f- being able to be tradable. Now, okay. what you can do is if you pay gems, right? Um, I'm talking about the gems part, not the gold part. If you pay gems, I think it should be a a sure thing, right? Mm-hmm. You want to spend money. If you're spending money, it should be a sure thing. So I would spend money to um, account Upgrade. bound uh, account bound my my legendary definitely, or or even make it sellable. But I don't know. I don't know if they want to go that way. But I I would I would enjoy that because can you imagine if you um, it depends on how much it is on a gem store. If you will outweigh, like, can you imagine selling your gear again and see how that goes? So that well, that... yeah. The, the weird thing with the idea of spending gems to make something sellable is it would just become. I don't actually think there's much intrigue there because it's just profit for, for profit. People would be like, okay. I need 400 gems to make this sellable. 400 gems will cost me X amount of gold. Mm. If I sell it, I will get X amount of gold. What's the difference there? Is it worth my investment? Yes or no? And then they just do it. And it's like, mm. I don't know. I don't know whether that's really a fun feature. So I don't yeah, know whether they do that. Yeah, account bound is definitely something I would like in the gem store. Yeah. Definitely. Especially for, for big items like uh, great swords. I mean, not great swords. <laughs> legendaries. <laughs> how, mu- how much would you spend on uh, make this account bound item? Um, to upgrade one item. Now, do consider your. You might be thinking of your legendary right now and be right. like, oh, I'll pay a high price for that. But, but do you consider what if you want to do it for a full gear set? Like, you're going to need six of these items. Mm hmm. That's a lot. That's well, a 12 lot. if you want to do it with trinkets as well. Right. So, a full gear set. How much is that worth to me? It's definitely not worth that much. I'd rather spend the money. I'd rather, I'd rather farm or do some dungeons or something like that other than spend real, real money. For like, wait, wait, like, imagine if it was like $20, right? Okay. So that would be, what, like uh, 200 gems each? No, no, no. Uh, no I actually no. don't know what it is for dollars because no, it's well, different. Well, well, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's different. I totally forgot that it's different. Um, But, yeah, like, if it was that... You'd, sp- you'd like, spend twenty bucks to make I all of your gear. I wouldn't. You wouldn't. 
I would Ten bucks? Ten bucks for for that ma- many pieces of gear? Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen? But they wouldn't find it. Let's find the sweet spot. Fifteen? No. No, no. I don't think 13. I would pay money for that. Like it, it account bound forever. It has to be account bound forever if I'm gonna be spending money on it too. Yeah, account bound forever. Maybe what if they just condense it and just make your you just Make everything at night. This is crazy. No, 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 no. Like all the armor. Like you just toss in all the armor and then it'll just bring everything to our compound. For one item. Kind of like how you do transmutation stones, but except a whole bunch of slots for everything. And then it just, you just put them all in there and you just press, oh, account bound, and then it just changes into a Comes out the other side. Yeah, instead of just doing it. So what you're suggesting, one item with six slots in it? Yeah. And then you would buy two, one for your get- armor, one for your trinkets, and maybe a third for a weapon, or yeah. all your weapons. Or maybe Six it has uses, maybe it has uses instead, and you could just, just put it in a oh, slot. Oh yeah, uses would make a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. got six uses or something. Man, yeah, man, okay, we're, so how much we're would talking you it up on the podcast u- this time. A, a six, look, we're doing market research for the devs. It's, it, we're not being paid for this, it's cool. <laughs> uh, how much would you spend for six for a six, six uses one? Again, ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars is fine for a six uses one, that, and that oh. that goes to the same thing of like, you know, I don't think it could be any less. I'm like, like it if it was like, okay, what what if it was eighty gems, right, for one, you know, and then let's say, I would five hundred for my legendaries. Yeah, five hundred, five hundred ish for like the six slot one. Because five, don't forget all our. Gems. All- all, all our calculations here as well are meant, uh, should work for the in-game economy too. You wouldn't spend ten dollars, but would you spend, you know, fifty gold or something? Yeah. You know, yeah. That's the other way to look at it. But I would absolutely do that for my legendary. How are you going to feel if on twenty seventh of March, when account bound comes out, they literally like new item coming to the gem store, and it's like a, a charge thing, and uh, it, it does exactly what we say, and it's called Visual Wood. Oh, dude. <laughs> I I don't man. I wonder I wonder if the devs li- listen to the cast that often for them to be like, dude, oh, there's no way that would happen ever. But that'd be so funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like they would like add in some visual wood thing in there, or like uh, a matte visual, or a uh, wooden it, potatoes it, it's like an character. Item. You- yeah, it's an item you can only buy on the gem store if you listen to the Visual Wood podcast and get the secret code we release once at the end of each one, <laughs> hidden somewhere in there. Oh, Today's gosh. secret code is 57437. There you go. Enter that in, in chat, in Guild Wars 2. Send Matt Visual a mail in Guild Wars 2 with that code. To and he'll, H! Uh... Oh my gosh, I'm going to get <laughs> spammed. Holy crap. They're adding a drum kit. Boom, boom, boom. Psh, 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 you know, all that good oh, stuff. Can I just take this opportunity to go bong since we haven't really... D- did know. a bong? Yeah. Well, drum kit. We, there's a drum kit coming that was uh, data mined. All links will be in the description below. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, is that all you have to say about that? You're not very excited. I mean, you're musically uh, inclined. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 th- I think I, I, I used to play drums like t- for years for my church, but then I moved up to Georgia, and that's where it ended. But um, because I live in the in a in a small condo, like I don't even have a room, so there's, I've told there's no Matt way. This before he should just play because his neighbor's loud anyway. Yeah, he's got right. Neighbors so on can... one side arguing. He's got neighbors on the other side playing loud. <gasps> Are they the same neighbor? So so DJ Light could call the cops <laughs> on me again. <laughs> So he can Wait, call the cops that? on me. Well, not not the cops. He called the security guard on me. <laughs> really? He's like you're too loud. Because I got these new speakers. Um, and the bass, the bass, like I have to turn it all the way off. I can't even give it a little bit of bass because it travels through the wall. Because bass travels along the wall, and you have to get like bass traps mm-hmm. and you know, soundproofing. That's so. why if you're outside a club, you hear only the bass line. Yeah. <laughs> and inside, it's going like. <laughs> Yeah, and you don't hear the. <laughs> so wait, he called the cops on you. No, 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 the security. We have a security in our building. Still, that's pretty. I they... don't know, man. That's kind of. What, what do you mean? Are you angry about that? No, well, I, I'm not angry. I'm, have you I'm... called security on anyone in your condo? Um, once because uh the um we have other neighbors next door. Uh, this white couple, they like to play so their. They, they no, <laughs> they like to play their um. Their, you know, the party music very loud. <laughs> I was about to get racist. Um, they they like to play their party music very loud in the morning, like in the morning, like seven o'clock. You're like, oh snap! Like 
I'm trying to sleep, even though I kind of wake up early now anyway, so it doesn't really matter anymore. But they it used to be like, like really loud. Like you would hear it through the microphone. I couldn't do anything. So I was like, when I, when when the security guard goes to these people, does he say, "Oh, no, I'm at a visual in apartment X"? No, no. He How do you know who called the security on you then the other day? Because because I guessed it. I oh, guess okay. who it was. Oh, this is this is. I, I guess know, man. It, and and wrong. then and I know the security guys. I'm really cool with them because I'm you know I'm a real cool guy. Because you, know? you call them all the time. They're like your biggest customer. Yeah, yeah. customer for what? I don't sell my body on the street anymore, dude. I don't do that anymore. Doesn't like your rent go I, on I paying used... them? So in a weird way, you are sort of a customer. Mm, and... <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, drum kit. There you go. That, that that's that's where we came from for when we talked about drum kits. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, look, it's not just a drum kit though. It's uh-huh. a recording device Ooh. that is confirmed to work for all other stuff. So you start the recording device in game. You play a little ditty. You know, you play the Lord of the Rings theme on your flute or whatever, and then you hit end record, and it will keep looping that back, and then you can play something else. You can be a one man band in Guild Wars Two. You can do so much with that now. And yeah. it's quite fitting it comes with the bait, with the uh, drums, because, you know, you can kick up a beat on the drums, put it on a loop, and then play the rest of your stuff on top of it. That is so cool, man. I, like, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I know nothing I about music theory. I at the choir thing. The Christmas choir one? Oh, that's just Guitar Hero, though. D- you get, no, you get but, the hang of that if you but, play it enough. Yeah, yeah, but I don't... Like, it doesn't work. Like, the way they have the keys set up, it just doesn't oh, work for me. Oh, that's excuses. Come on, you can ace that. Everyone. Dude, boom, Guitar boom, Hero, boom. easy. But, like, that? I don't know, dude. It gets annoying. <laughs> it gets really it's annoying. It's like a camera angle. You have to angle it, like, in a certain way. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's yeah. what everyone always says. Yeah, but I... But I, that's I, so cool. The, I, the music thing, dude. I hear I, people I play like Zelda it. on there. There's a lot of good stuff, man. The, those are... I'm telling you, the future of Guild Wars 2 videos on YouTube playing music playing like you know the london being the london symphony orchestra um but in guild wars 2 and just playing like all this crazy stuff the, that's what it's going to be i i remember there's some person that like uh edits guild wars 2 and like i guess after effects and he makes oh, yeah. like like a concert and stuff like that and he plays a song you ever saw that before no i haven't actually yeah yeah like i'll try to find it i try i'm pretty sure someone in the comments will, will find it as well but like there's there's a couple videos of them like I don't know editing it and putting it into the game or um, having their own like stage and stuff. I, I can't remember what it was, but that's like the only video that they have uh, for that type of style. But yeah. So what else is changing? Runes, sigils, and balance updates. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Can we go to an earlier bong as well? I just want to talk about it for a second. All right, bong, 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 bong. Um, so. You guys know about the data mining. We've been talking about it a little bit here. Um, well, that shaman uh, was data mining quite a while ago about the Morgamoth stuff. If you guys remember, there was a big leak in the community where people found out, oh, Morgamoth is the end of the season. And um, what a lot of those people data mining didn't find were a lot more strings and conversations and pieces of information about the finale that eventually all got changed. What it looks like is when that big leak happened... The devs removed a bunch of stuff that you could data mine from the client and then changed a lot of the way the season was going to end. So do you want to hear what maybe... Um... So he put up this post where he talked about like all the original ending of the season, the ending we never saw. Did you see Ooh, anything with this? Oh, no. And so you know how Marjorie gets injured and then basically just comes back to life and she's fine? Yeah. Well, originally she was going to be dead, like full time. She was dead. She was a completely dead what? character. and she was that was it like that was a big part of the conclusion you know that big bit at the dead end bar at the end where um we're just all celebrating in the most recent patch well um in the original version she uh that we weren't celebrating it was like a time of mourning and everyone was sad and you know mourning the death of marjorie and like that it was decorated to look like winter's day because marjorie had requested it and like logan comes in the room and he says oh i'm so sorry that, uh, for your loss and logan starts talking about how his brother died which apparently was quite distasteful in the way they implemented it but i actually think it's quite cool like we, we've never heard him talk about dylan in game it's just like a novel thing so that would have been quite cool but apparently he comes in and talks about and like marjorie was dead dead as a dodo and originally as well, you know how Timey's completely off screen in the finale patch? 
Yeah. Um, she was going to be a part of the Lion's Arch fight, but she was going to like run off or get distracted or something. And that caused Bram to have to leave with her. And Bram never even gets into the Breachmaker. And that, I believe that's the same with Rox as well. And so it's just you, Casimir and Marjorie that go up to fight uh, Scarlet. Scarlet captures Mar. Here's how Marjorie died. It wasn't just a random explosion. Scarlet was going to capture Marjorie, and for this, Marjorie was getting. Scarlet has like, like this line where she's like, "Oh, you you count your lucky st- stars. I'm better than the Elder Dragons. They don't take prisoners, but I have obviously." And then like Marjorie goes insane because she's been captured. And she gets like really 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 angry. Um, fights against Scarlet, and then Scarlet starts goading her, and Casimir says, "Please, no, Marjorie, stop st- stop goading her." And she calls her Jewelry, and then Scarlet calls Marjorie Jewelry and says, "Yeah." stop jewelry or something bad might happen to you or something along these lines and then marjorie like does something because she's angry and then scarlet literally just turns around and like just blows her head off and just kills her and then then casimir goes crazy and i'm guessing that final bit was always going to be the same with blows casimir her going, head ah! off well no she didn't i don't know how it was going to look Dude, i like to just, imagine i was she just visualizing everything you were talking about and then you just <laughs> put that image in my mind and i just imagine her just bloom just yeah, because some- it's got like, the dark, isn't it? I'm, I'm talking about like that old, that old squids uh, type of uh, sh- uh, movie, like in uh, RoboCop. <laughs> All the blood just gushing everywhere. Like oh, that, dude. Head so exploded. Amazing. Gif. Like, oh my god, head exploded. So, 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 so good. Watch RoboCop, people. Not, not the new stuff, but the old one with the the squibs. <laughs> oh, oh, we never said. So, uh, this is so loose. But do you want to set up a movie for next podcast? Um, sure, sure. A movie club movie? A movie what do you club want movie. What, what have you got on your mind? Oh, man, I, d- I don't know. I don't know what what has been recently released. I haven't seen much. What about you? Well, you do you want to do do make it Robocop? <laughs> let's, I've never seen Robocop. Dude, let's do Robocop, the first one. Do first Robocop. Okay, all right, Robocop All right, one. kids, it's, it's, very, it's very, like, th- this was, like, marketed to kids, but it was very gory. Like, they had the toys and everything back in the days. But it was very gory. Like th- back then, they like I don't I don't get it. Like they had the action heroes, and it was very mature. But for some reason, and and it was like rated R. But for some reason, kids went to go see it. Like it was ridiculous. I, I don't know how they do that nowadays. Wow. But, uh, okay. Uh, but now they now they don't do it. Of course, obviously you can't do that anymore. But like uh, it was marketed to kids. All the like the toys and everything. It, so it was weird. It was weird, isn't it? Like you have a movie that's mature, but you have toys for kids so it was sounds smart to me from a marketing perspective you get all the adults are bound to like it the kids are going to be like oh yeah it's this crazy cool thing you know it's like playing grand theft auto when you're before you're allowed to and they have like exact nightmares kind of at thing. night after they, after yeah they're the watching. cool kids are all like yeah i watched it, it was awesome yeah it didn't affect me you know, yeah, stuff like that. even though like they they were crying and pissing their pants the night before wow i'm i'm wow. just saying i'm just saying that... do you have a story about weeing yourself at the cinema Dude, I never, I never wee myself <laughs> at the cinema. What are you talking about? I don't know. I was just fishing. Yeah, oh, you, just know fishing. you know what? You know what? But the thing is, have you ever had to pee at the cinema? And you're like, I am All not missing. I am not missing it. I am not. I just can't. I just can't. I have to hold it. I have to hold it. And as soon as the credit rolls, I'm just like, no. And then, no. As soon as the credit roll, I'm like, okay, I have to wait to see if there's something at the end, which I think is so yeah, stupid. Yeah. Just like. I was like, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. Why is it? Why they can't just show it at the end of the movie? Why do I have to wait until the credits roll? It's so annoying. Everyone's like, Hmm? Yeah, uh, De- Desolation of Smog came out um, on DVD the other day, and um, so I rewatched it. When I watched it at the cinema, my experience was very wounded by the fact I constantly needed to go to the toilet. I got up like three different times. I didn't even drink that much. It was really bad. Because it's, it's a fairly long movie. It was horrible. Like I, I cannot focus if I need to go to the toilet. I can't. And it ruins the entire film. If I'm sitting there and half my mind is thinking about how desperate I need to pee and I just want the feeling to go away, uh, it just it takes you completely out of it. So, um, yeah, and like the other problem was it was kind of blurry and rubbish in the cinema I went to see it. So, yeah, like a lot of r- movies have been ruined because of that exact thing. And like those are the longest pees ever as well, by the way. <laughs> I think the longest pee of my entire life has been after I've been watching like a long film and you get out and you have held it the entire time and you're just there like ah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the one you're the one at, at the at the cinema bathroom and you're just like taking your time like you're taking and like a- the urinals overflow and so you gotta like quickly hold it move to the next one along <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh gosh rune sigils and balance updates 
we are here once yeah, again. Yeah, so this was this was today's article that went up. Yeah. I read it just before we recorded the podcast. I've got quite a lot to talk about on it. Um, so do you want to just give an overview of what they said? And then I, I've got like some things I know it says I read through it and I want to go through them and just like throw them your way and see what you thought as you read it. Um, well, I guess a brief thing is basically there, uh, obviously another blog that came out today was critical damage or changing it to fer- ferocity, ferocity, mm-hmm. uh, which is basically kind of like precision or any uh, other trait, right? It's a number that gets converted into a percentage. Um, mm-hmm. it is. Overall, there's like a 10% loss when it comes down to uh, critical damage uh, from the change to ferocity. Is it only mm-hmm. in Celestial or overall? It's overall, right? I, I, overall. Every single one, it's overall. Right. So, and, and Celestial would have been hit really hard, but they're a 10% universally boost. buffing. Yeah, the 10% yeah. boost on Celestial um, all stats. So that is pretty cool. So and on top of that, it's being made even better in PvP as well because it's really bad in PvP. Um, going from strictly memory, uh, they're basically doing the same thing here where the, the fourth, fifth and sixth runes, they're going to give you a lot more, uh, mm-hmm. um, incentive to, to go into that fourth, fifth and sixth. Uh, basically they, they want to alien people, people who are just going, you know, one or two runes in, you know, depending on what build you're going on and, um, going into, but they kind of want to, uh, it, it seems like a lot of it is making it easier for new players getting into the game. Yeah, do, so do you remember when we, this originally came out and we talked about it in the podcast and I specifically said, I don't like or understand why they are, you know, forcing people to move away from mixing and matching because that adds some interesting depth to the game. Do you remember me mm-hmm, saying that? Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, I don't understand why they're doing it. Well, they answered that question on this post and the answer to that question is, oh, we want to make it easier for newbies. Basically, and I don't. I just don't get it. Like that's not enough. I don't, know. I don't think. I think that's that's just something to say, um, just to justify their. Uh, you know, is that re- is it really such a pox on Guild Wars Two that all these players are trying out the game and then quitting because all these small little things like accidentally putting one extra trait in a line or you know only getting five runes and so is this really really the big reason? No, I, I don't. don't th- I don't think it, this is the reason why they would leave. Because a lot of people do leave, but this is not the reason. And I can understand making lots of small changes so the overall product feels more rewarding to play, and you know less of these small contrivances. But it just—it's weird to me. It's a big. Ch- it's not a huge change, so it's just a minor quirk that I'm pointing out. But this was their answer to it. They just want to make it easier for people playing the game. And um, the key thing here, though that's really significant with this is you can no longer mix and match in pvp which i would argue is the best place that used to incentivize doing it yeah. so they've just removed it completely you now only have one slot for a rune in pvp and it just applies to all your armor which i thought was and weird i mean again like that actually in some ways I, i'm kind of excited about because it was always annoying swapping builds in pvp like oh i have to go back and buy six of these runes or get a full stack mm-hmm. and then double click double click double click so this will be a little bit nicer especially if it's just like a dragon job job that you can do um but you know it is a little bit of depth that's been lost there hopefully you know stat wise it won't matter to people because of the way they've rebalanced the way the stats work but um yeah it's, uh, another little thing that's changed where is it going to be is there going to be like an extra slot for it which i doubt or is it just going to be like on a helmet or something i don't know actually um it's pretty they weird talked about it? It as if it was it talked about it as if it was going to be a new slot i would imagine it to be like a slot under your weapon slots mm-hmm. on the ui yeah, or but like it's weird for the them to change and... something for PvP and then not have it for PvE. So I wonder how that's going to work. Well, I don't know. I can understand why it's not there in PvE because, like, a lot of the, the gold sink and the economy through the trading post is buying six of these items. And if you let people just have one, then what's the point in having tiers at all as well? You know, if you only have one rune ever, what is the point of having tiers? True, very, very true. But you're going to have tiers in um, PvE. And they don't... They, they, as they say, they don't yeah. want to keep switching PVE from PVP. Uh, they mm-hmm. want th- those things to have the, si- the same thing. Um, yeah, and they actually said they've normalized it as well. There's no more rune differences between PVE and PVP. It's all the right. same. And that could mean there's new rune sets available in PVP, like runes of the altruism or whatever. Um, there's a lot of rune sets, like new ones that came in that have never been available for PVP. And this could, like the meta in PVP is going to change a lot just because of all these things blending together like this. Um, okay, so I, I'll, I'll talk about some other things in, in the post, okay? All right. 
Um, what do you think about the fact all the proc chances are going up? Like, this was one thing they announced. Sigils, runes, all this stuff. It used to be stupidly low, like, runes of the nightmare, 5% chance to fear someone. That's now going up to, like, 50%. Do you, are you excited about that? Is there any runes you're interested in looking at now? I, I, I'm, I'm more excited on the, the change to chance on critical to more chance on hit. Yeah, you like seen that? the sigil of healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's sixty percent chance uh, to on hit to remove a condition. Sigil of purity with a ten second cooldown. That's something cool, you know. Like I said, the the chance on 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 critical, which you know goes back to what I'm saying. It's like why all this? Why berserkers? Why all critical? Why is it always this? You know, now they're they're kind of supporting other things now. Now you don't have Absolutely. to worry about it. You know, it you gets can more run PTV variety. and have it. Yeah. You know, and, and be totally fine with that because, you know, I don't have crit, right, when, I, when I'm running PTV, uh, Power, mm-hmm. Toughness, Fatality, um, on my Guardian. So I can have these things that are like, you know, remove conditions and constantly be tanky, even though, I don't know, I'm kind of going away from that. It depends on how they, what, what else they switch to make it more rewarding to actually support someone. But yeah. yeah. I, I found this quite funny as well. There were two, like, first of all, they talk about a sigil of conjuring. Which mm-hmm. I don't believe exists. Like I don't. I've never heard of a sigil of conjuring. It's not on the wiki either. A sigil of conjuring? What? But apparently, a sigil of conjuring was once the same as the sigil of sanctuary, which gave you invulnerability when you got like enough stacks, which was bad. They're changing both of those. But they also had another typo. Someone is clearly reading the works by George R. R. Martin, um, <laughs> who said that they said that there are ice and fire sigils. Talking about uh, the fire and air sigils, but they accidentally <laughs> have a typo on the the ice sigil. So that was really funny. To to me but they're changing those so now you know sigil of fire used to be what like i actually can't remember what was the proc chance on that it was something on crit it's now 50 percent chance that's 50, crazy 50%. and then the sigil of air was all and the sigil of air was always worse because the base damage was almost identical air was ever so slightly higher but it was insignificant while fire was aoe so you just always go fire well now air has a lower cooldown on it so you're constantly lighting striking the poop out of people as you attack them that's so cool so they've changed that and balanced those around. Um, and I'm sure air sigils will have probably spiked on price on the trading post as a result of this already just from this change or announcement of a change. And there was another thing in this post that I, I really wanted to dig at you about. Uh, they obviously went and said, oh, here, here's all the changes to the classes. You mentioned it earlier on the podcast. I was reading through them and then they had on Guardian. There aren't going to be any major changes to the yeah! Guardian. We thought there were any strong plays right now. Why? <laughs> Every time. Why? It's Every they are time. In a strong place. Every time. It's the same thing. Uh, Guardians okay. Guardians okay. You don't have to touch Guardians. Dang it. Dang it, man. Every other class. <laughs> Every class other than the Guardian gets touched. It's just so annoying. My neighbors are going to like knock on my door of. After that, yeah, I'll like is security it, is, guard. It's everything. If the security you? guard knocks, please put him on the line with me, and I'll pretend I'll pretend <laughs> I'm your boss at like some big British corporation, <laughs> and because of the accent, he'll totally buy it. <laughs> and I'll be like, "Don't worry, I'll uh, I'll I'll, I'll have it. It's completely on me. I'll send you a check in the mail to the order of twenty thousand pounds." But- and um. Blah blah blah. But but remember, you you were just talking about last podcast how um someone turned up uh the sound of of people fighting and no one knocked on a door. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Oh so you're saying we should pretend we're having a domestic? So no that nobody no, comes to I, the door. I I'm pretty sure no one's gonna come to the door because no one cares about domestic violence. Everyone cares when it's it's like oh music like oh put that down I'm trying to sleep or I'm trying to watch a movie or something. But as soon as it's domestic Actually, violence... Actually, do you know what? Yeah, well, the thing is, like, one of them's just something people are doing for fun, so they feel like they can complain about it. But this is literally, like, a big part of what you do for a living, so surely you could justify it and be like, well, no, this is something I have to do, so... <laughs> and stick your middle finger up, and yeah. you'll be fine. But survivability, you see that, right? In every every class, it's more... They're, I they're... see support being inf- emphasized mm-hmm. rather than survivability. People don't need more survivability. You can be full Zerks and survivable enough. But support, I see them trying to emphasize. <coughs> did, you, did you hear they, they, <coughs> n- they n- um, buffed... Uh, what's it called? Uh, a random boss in Honor of the Waves. No. Yeah, so like, there's all this stuff about, oh, we're trying to change the meta, blah, blah, blah. They randomly, without mentioning it any patch notes, buffed like to a really high degree. I've heard so many people talk about it, so I'm assuming it's really powerful now. One of the bosses in Honor of the Waves dungeon now like just one-shots everyone constantly and does all this stuff. <laughs> that, yeah, 
And it's like, oh, why have they done this? Oh, they're trying to get rid of the DPS meta, and yet what are they doing? Adding a giant meat wall enemy that you want to cleave through as quickly as possible, and the only way to survive his attacks are by dodge rolling. So how is this doing anything for the meta? And everyone was like complaining about it, which I sort of agree with if that's the implementation of the boss. I, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, if 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 you want something, you want to make something harder. Don't just add health or or add some you know poor mechanic. You know what they need to do? They they need to add really really ramp up the amount of enemies in the game that do lots of hits of little attacks mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that reduces the emphasis of of dodging because then you've got like this attrition constantly your health is bubbling down and then healing does stuff you know i feel like regeneration needs to be far, the boon regeneration needs to be far harder to have access to last way less time but be really really powerful so, like, regeneration is, like, half the amount of healing as you'd get when you're out of combat. You know how quickly it goes up out of combat? Imagine halving that, and you get that while in combat if you have regeneration on you, but it's really hard to get access to that boon, and you need to pay attention to it, and you need to use combo fields to get that boon properly. And so then you balance the dungeon so it's lots of small hits, and that in that way, healing does stuff, because you're countering the, the constant flurry of damage coming at you, and then you still have the big hits coming in, so people are still having to focus on dodge rolling, but, you know, the support has a play. That's what they need to do, um, but it's like a huge thing, and I feel like just the dungeons. Are yeah, the they they have to balance it a certain way that it's just like doesn't full out like someone has to be dedicated to actually healing because that's not what they want. They don't want a tank and they don't want the healing, but they they seem to be branching out a little bit, especially they with some control and support. Yeah, is the terms. So, so. yeah, I it's all about. I mean, balancing. support does have a place in the game at the moment, just not a big enough place. Control is the no, huge it, one. I actually found a, it. There is a place. There, it, it's just not in PVE, dude. In, there is a place in for support in, in PVE. In in World of World, yeah. But what you were saying, like like last week, like there's no point oh, it was in about doing healing power. Yeah, healing power and all that. Like that. Well, I don't know about healing power, but supporting it's like it's in. It's in PV uh, in World v. World all the time. Like everyone has a guardian in their group, like organized um, mm-hmm. World v. World groups. And the way they run is they always have a guardian. He's always running a certain build, uh, slightly well, you, you tanky. You always want a guardian in PVE too. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what I'm saying is like it's very important when it comes down to uh, to to World v. World. Like very important. Like, I think support, support is important. It's in not about in damage. PVE as well. It's not a, like it's about damage, but not about like oh. All damage all the time. No, there's a lot of supporting when it comes down to world. Yeah, but you, world. you appreciate that you can. The reason why damage is so strong is because you can be full damage and still supporting in Guild Wars Two. Because you can be full damage and protection is just as strong. Stability yeah, but you can't do that in World strong. of World. Blinds just, are just, just as die. strong. Reflects are just as strong. You just die yeah, in I, World I know, of World. I'm, You'll just die. Yeah. Like there's Zerkers has no place in World mm-hmm. of World unless you're like roaming by yourself and you're you're incredibly good at not getting backstabbed by a thief by you know like there's there's no way like if you're if you're just walking and you don't see anybody come up behind you you're dead that's just how it is boom you're dead like that's how it when you're on a zerker because you have low very very low health when it comes down to guardians and, and elementalists all we have is 10k <laughs> so it it happens um sit two sigils on two-handed weapons before we only had one now we have two, which I I'm very excited about for my greatsword. Yeah, I'm super excited about going back to PvP uh, with my nuke build because that's going to change some stuff. Because I've been switching that. my sigils a lot, and they're very expensive. So first I would have like the sigil of energy, and then I would switch it to like the sigil of force, and then I'll switch it back to this, and I switch back to that. Like and they're expensive to be spending money on that, um, just to test it out, like in combat, because I, I I really want to find that nice sweet spot that I like. Um, yeah, for two hundred people, this is just so huge, you know. Yeah. Oh, dude. sorry. Yeah. Oh, wait. I was uh, sorry. I was talking about a totally different feature just a second ago. Yeah, the two, the two, the two sigils on a single weapon is very cool. Did you notice a change though that they did in accordance with that, which I didn't expect? You know how currently you can stack bloodlust and then swap your weapon. Mm-hmm. You can't do and that you'll anymore. you'll still get... Right. Yeah, and they're not going to let you do that anymore. So, yeah, you get an extra slot, but in a lot of ways, you've also just lost a slot. So, uh, it's like, oh, man. 
If you're a two-handed guardian now, before you would have had a, um, or you should have had a, a bloodlust uh, sigil, and then you swap to another great sword with a fire sigil, or whatever the hell you want. Now would you have? Now you have one great sword with both bloodlust and fire on it. It's like what? So I, that you don't get any more freedom? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't get that change. Like, yes, yeah, some people what they do, like what I used to do with my um, my my NG is I have two pistols, right? And I would just stack uh, condition damage, right? Or power. Mm-hmm. I, I switch them up every once in a while, um, trying different stuff. And I would have, you know, like 250 more condition damage. And then I just swap to my other stuff and I would have it there until I die. Um, mm-hmm. I can't do that anymore. But th- that's fine. That is fine when you unequip the weapon. But when you're just switching weapons, that kind of sucks. Oh, I, d- I think you can probably still weapon swap. I think you can probably still weapon you swap. Still, I you really can, don't. You can still weapon okay, swap. Okay, so yeah, if you can weapon swap, then you do have freedom because you could put it on your offset and then have two sigils on your main set. Okay, okay, true. okay, 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 okay. Just just, yeah. just making sure. That's actually a very good point. Um, And another thing that I'm curious about now on top of this, because they've made this change, when they originally announced this stuff was going to be happening, they said that you still... You know how now you, you can have multiple sigils proc at once, so fire and air can proc together, and geomancy and hydromancy can proc together. All of it can proc together. Um, That immediately made people think, well, can I stack bloodlust and corruption if I like? And then unequip them and then go momentum and, uh, you know, all of these and just have tons of plus 25s to all my stats. Well, um, they originally said back then, no, you couldn't do this because of, you know, you could just stack so many different stats. But now with this change where if you unequip the weapon you can, um, it will remove it. I wonder whether that also means we can now double up and you could have corruption and power together or you could have um and bloodlust together or you could have um accuracy for precision and life for healing power and you could have like double up like i wonder because now there's no reason not to have that in there right and that would be pretty cool if you're there and then you do that for both weapon sets you could then have plus four of those on active at once which at the cost of all other sigils might not be too bad that'd be really cool to see i'd love to see that um and i'm curious but they haven't made any announcements either way on it so could be a little bit too op um, is that pretty much it for this this yeah. article? Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, the other one is basically changing crit damage to ferocity, which, which we talked about, which yeah. we talked about. So there you go. I, 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 wow, wow, a lot of Guild Wars two this time. Oh, one time thing I was going to say questions? with the crit. Huh? With, well, with the crit damage one, mm-hmm. you know how it's going down by ten percent, and everyone's expecting you know a lot of the. I feel like a lot of the people that c- are going to complain about the 10% drop generally are going to be a little bit less educated about the game. And maybe that's a prejudice I shouldn't hold, but I feel like that's what's going to happen. However, with this change, you know how you always have 150% base chance right, damage right. anyway? They, I was and they're rolling it. it all in. they're rolling it all into one. And I feel like those same people now are going to log in after the patch. They're going to see that their crit damage is 50% higher than it, 150% higher than it was before. And they're going to be like, oh, I thought this was getting nerfed, dude. It's clearly not, and they'll be totally happy, and it will go way over their heads. I feel like that's exactly what's going to happen. To to explain a little bit more, um, base crit damage, when you crit, you get 150% of of your damage. no investment in gear or anything. No investment. Now, Mm -hmm. all your crit damage that you see adds on top of the 150%. So if you had 50% crit damage, it is 200% more damage when you crit. Yes. All right. Question time. There's no question one in this folder. Um, <laughs> question one got deleted. Oh, I want to clarify as well. I'm like super bored of Twitch Plays Pokemon now. Oh my god. Man, I got bored like the first few minutes. I, I think that's a cool idea. Always boring, but yeah. man... I was subbed to the subreddit, and there's a lot of, like, art that goes on it, but it's all the same joke constantly. It's, uh, like, really boring now. It's, oh, Helix, 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 Helix. It's like, oh, Jesus. And that happened to me a while ago. I got very bored of it quite a while ago. I'm still subbed to the subreddit, but every time my heart sinks a little bit when I say it, I'm like, man, come on. Shouldn't there be new in-jokes now that we've finished gold? No, there's not. Anyway, uh, that was like such a random segue. Uh, the first question comes from a lovely uh, lady, I'm guessing, called Kahida G, who says, Hi WP, hi Matt. It's safe to say that this is never happening, but if secondary professions were a thing in Guild Wars 2, like they were originally meant to be back in the day, correct me if I'm wrong, which cross-profession combinations would you find the most fun to play or the most powerful? Well, let me clarify. 
Yes, way back in the day, two professions were going to be the thing. But this was also so far back in time that they were originally going to have like a, an AI companion that would follow you around all the time. And those and like a big part of playing the game was going to be like climbing trees and, you know, crazy stuff that like never ended up a part of the, the game, especially with like the release of SWOTOR and their companion systems. It just never happened. So I really don't think you can say anything in Guild Wars 2 is a remnant of those original design philosophies. Like, I don't think it has any bearing on the game at all. But the question, which pro cross-profession combos would I find most fun to play? What do you think? Mm. And by the way, I think I think what, what what this person means as well is, obviously you've got, like, combo fields and stuff in Guild Wars 2, yeah. but, and, and they're, like, the cross-profession combo system, but they're not really cross-profession at all. I think what this person means is, Let's say you could have a guardian greatsword and then weapon swap to a warrior greatsword. Like, what, what, what synergies and combos could you play out of through there? One weird one that I always kind of like. Well, I, I think. I, what about, about the traits? So no traits and stuff. Yeah, I, and maybe I think traits as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like it, it has to be combined together. So, so you get two have... different trait pages. Yeah, you yeah. get the say you get seventy awesome. points to spread. You get seventy points to spend across two different trait pages. Oh, I don't know about that, but okay. Uh -huh. Why? Come on, like it's not you, seventy basically, points if, if, only. If they give you the hundred and forty points, then you're basically just two professions in one, and like there's no fun there. There's no like build. Well, give there. a little, not, not full on, but maybe a little bit more points, just a, a tad bit more to balance it points. all out. Eighty. I'm a hard task. <laughs> wow. <with> that. <laughs> wow. That's not even that many. That's only Here's one, one I point. think would be quite fun. Mm -hmm. You can, um, warriors get a trait where they, uh, okay, it used to have, uh, let's pretend it doesn't have an internal cooldown on it, okay? Warriors used to have a trait where if they crippled someone, they would immobilize them. I think I heard this a while ago. Uh, rangers obviously have the ability barrage, which is a huge AoE that keeps damaging enemies, and every time they take damage, they get crippled. So you take the warrior trait and use barrage as a ranger, and you've got everyone permanently immobilized in a giant AoE nuke. That'd be pretty fun. Jeez, I, I I'm I'm thinking about guardian and necro, like people who basically are, are, are warrior and 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 ranger. Warrior and anything, dude. Just take Hillsig on any other class, and you're golden. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like there's so many ways, there's so many imbalances. <laughs> I can't even think of them all. I mean, like seriously, you could just like, I mean, it, it, any like if you if you put. Necro with another melee damage character, like melee and warrior. I mean, not melee and warrior. Necro and warrior. Like, you just put whales down and just do your 100 blades and... Oh, my gosh. You could dude. combine... Like, condition-wise, you could combine Necro with Engineer. So you get the fat Condi range from Engineer, high confusion rates, high burning rates. But then you also get the high fear rates and the trait that makes your fear do damage on Necro. And yeah. have just, like, an un an insane Condi boss that would just, like, top be the king of absolutely everything anytime ever. ever. Or, Basically, like, just yeah. adding kits onto other characters. You know, having a Mesmer that can run around with the kits at the same time. Maybe there's not much synergy there. Because some professions are like really... Like Mesmer is very much about your shatters and the phantasms and the way that those skills work. It's like it's like an island of a profession. So there's not much synergy by combining with other classes. But I'm sure everyone ever who's played Guild Wars 2 and has actually played a second character has seen that second character and the access that that profession has to certain things and thought, wow, I wish I had this on my ex, you know. Wow, I really wish I had this extra thing on my Necro. It'd be so OP, and yet they don't get to have it. You know what would be an OP tank boss? Would be Guardian and NG. Having that supply turret and all that, like, there's no, there's oh, I no way. That. Guardian Warrior would be a stronger tank. Mm. And you just go really deep into all the defensive lines. Oh, dude, there is no contest. The, the Warrior's base vitality on top of, like, adrenal healing, heal sig, the banners that give you permanent regen, along with the blocks that the Guardian gets, and, um, like, the blinds that the Guardian can constantly be thrown out. There's no contest. There yeah, is no there contest. is. The there heals. is. There's plenty of, there's plenty of contest there. Especially if you, if, if, even if you're... What's the uh, got for tank? It's got lower armor value. Higher vitality, I see you that. Some capacity to block, some capacity to blind. Don't tell me that the it, heal it doesn't, the it doesn't matter if you're good. if you're stunned all the time and I do a lot of damage. You're, you're just a guardian. Die. You've got, you're a guardian anyway. You've got stability. What, and warrior has more what, stability. What I'm access talking about. Than... I'm, I'm talking about stunning you. I'm talking about stunning you. You could do a lot of combos with the NG. Well, what if they've got stability? You have no way to strip those boons. What immobilize? 
Immobilize? Well, not, all stan- not all stands are melee, so immobilize isn't going to save you from all of that. Trust me. And NG immobilize is going down here after this patch NG. anyway. I will, I will, it's not stronger. It's, People it's will stronger. agree with me in the comments, I promise you. Take sides. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You you win winning. It's it's oh it's disgusting. Oh, I'm about to vomit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it probably is closer than I'm making out, but I do think that, like, just from PvP and like seeing the strongest bunkers, like you just combine them together. It's just it's un it's ungodly. Any anything anything combined with anything is going to be over. Well, I don't know about yeah. I don't know about Mesmer, but yeah. But I mean, if you're combining two things together. This There'll gonna, be something with Mesmer, I'm sure. This, but like, th- there's a lot of traits that just do some great synergy together, and just do some really ultimate damage and or. Uh, there's or gotta just be something, yeah, that just like one shots everything. Yeah, that would be amazing. There's got to be. So, but, Warrior uh, uh, would definitely that, that would be a part be cool of that. To comment on, people. You, te- uh, hopefully, other people have thought of some crazy stuff like this. Give us your crazy stuff. There's gotta be something out there, dude. I I gotta it's say though, like, Warrior and Guardian. If if I had the damage of a warrior as a guardian and I use my sword skill where I blink towards you and I stack invulnerability by blinding you and then do that uh, three sword move, flashing blade, like, holy crap. That would do a lot of damage, man. That was a lot of damage. Well, and then you just switch the in- back and do 100 blades when they try to run away. You press 5 on the, on the warrior on the warrior uh, greatsword and zoom up to them again and then do 100 blades. Like, you just... just they're, that's it. They're dead. Unless they disappear like a thief. Cause well, you've got no CC stupid. in that combo, so they're not actually going to... It would be well, very hard to kill someone with that. N- no, because the warrior does have CC. That's what well, they yeah, do with their combo. Yeah, your skill rotation, though, you never talked about any CC. So but, it wouldn't really work. But I can just add it in. Yeah, you could yeah. like you could bulls rush, but you could do like a bulls rush and then swap to guardian greatsword whirling wrath because that you did you see like I I've heard about this I've never seen it in practice but did you hear you can do like seventy k upwards with a guardian whirling wrath like your damage isn't necessarily that low, but the difference is like a hundred blades ticks into one number and whirling wrath doesn't so it looks like it does less damage or something like that. But what seventy k? No, that yeah, that's yeah. that was with um uh the guy. He was standing in the middle of oh, yeah, his hitbox. He was standing in the middle of the hitbox, and he had all the buffs in the game he could, and he had it stacked up that every boon that he had had one percent damage, and he had tons of boons. He had pretty much everything, he and all the up. Warner. The, the 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 banners the warrior banners everything and then he just did that and it just just did that many damage it's ridiculous See, people shouldn't say people shouldn't be like they shouldn't take a video of the max 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 like that that's never going to happen and explain this is why a class is op because it's like yeah that's you know. what they said in the comments oh guardians are op i'm like yeah okay did you not see all the stuff that he was stacking like are you okay and this, and this think, is probably I why. Like the, are I, I, I can see like the one of the developers like, oh, let me look up YouTube videos. Oh, the guardians are OP. We're not going to change anything on them. <laughs> well, in one way, like, what do you think about this? Guardian across all formats is always used. Everyone wants a guardian in World vs. World. Everyone wants a guardian in no matter what content you're doing in PVE, unless it's just walking about. What about Zerker? They people take Zerker Guardians in dungeons, dude. Mm-hmm. Like they're very, very strong. So mm-hmm. like every single bit of co- and in PV- PvP, largely you're gonna have a Guardian in, in in it. So in that in that in that perspective, Guardian is one of the strongest classes out there because they're always needed. It's not like you know Mesmer that gets shot or Necro that gets shafted a lot of the time. But apparently, um, according to uh, Ranger, the, I should say the the person who commented on that video, um, guardians are only for untalented uh, little <laughs> kids. So, um, I don't know. Maybe invalid. Maybe guardians need to be buffed more. Maybe they just suck. You know? Yeah, and then all the talentless people will go to another class <laughs> because it was buffed. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Right. They'll go to elementalist because that's easy, right? Oh, snap. snap. No, it's not easy at all. Um, leveling know, it. Leveling, le- well, yeah, skill rotations. It, you, you could kind of get in, accustomed to like just. If, if you're skill. on staff, it's like super basic. Yeah. It's like skill two, skill two. Well, whatever. We've been talking about this kind of stuff a lot this podcast. Do you want to go to the next question? Yeah, next question. All right. This is from David Rodriguez, who says, Hey, MV and WP. Do you talk? You talk a lot about both Guild Wars Two and movies. It's time to combine them. Oh my God! What is this? 
mm-hmm. if someone were to make a movie out of some of the lore in Guild Wars 2 and assuming it was a well-made movie, what particular part would you like to see? What kind? Of, I have this question a lot. Would you believe it? What really? kind of movie would it be? Yeah. I'll get your answer from it because I answered my mine. I'm not going to go into it. I, I'm almost sure we've done it on a visual, visual wood once as well. Mine would be a movie of the plot of Nightfall. I think would be fantastic. But go ahead. Do you, you got any ideas? Um, man, I would like to see an autobiography of Traherne. <laughs> yes, yes. I would like to see also with that. I would like to see another movie with Scarlet. <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's just let's just, let's just see it. Yeah, Scarlet, Scarlet was growing. Traherne. Hooking up, hooking up, yeah, that that could work. They they had a baby, and um, once Traherne is dead, that baby will grow, and then years later, down the line, as years pass, he becomes the new lord, and then he turns himself into an elder dragon, and okay. then he conquers the world and destroys the other elder dragons, and now he rules the magic in the so world. So far, it's all very plausible. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, we end up ganging up to destroy him. And then what happens, what happens is that he, we hit his wings, he falls onto a building and he, he sits there and scratches on the building for about two hours as we press two to kill him. Two hours? Mm-hmm. That makes him a lot harder than Zaisan. That's like an endurance marathon right there. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, that's what it was. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I mean, I would... I would like to see something on the Kodan and Norn, actually. What about the Quaggan and the conspiracy I w- theories behind I was, them? I was thinking about the Quaggan, but I was like, I don't want to hear, oh, Quaggan, so bored. Oh, Quaggan. Oh, my God, yeah, that's true. I couldn't watch a movie with Quaggan. I, w- I would lose my mind. Yeah, because it's <laughs> the way they talk. It's just the way they talk, and I'm like, oh, no, I can't I can't deal with that. Yeah, I would like Quaggan's in the, in the film, but mm-mm. maybe have that raw Quaggan, like in... in uh, um, uh, Kingdom Hearts. Mickey is like a really like B A. Like he's just straight up awesome. Like he could he could, and he's like a really small guy. So that that could be like that Quaggan. He could be like the the Mickey of Guild Wars Two, and he's like rolling around like a little Inzurin, just with a keyblade or a sword, <laughs> and uh, fighting people. Yeah, that would be pretty amazing. But yeah, I would like to see uh. The history with Kodan and Norn and see some epic boss battles and fights, maybe something related to like Star Wars the Force and everything. Like, oh, you have to believe in the spirits. You have to believe in the spirits. Spirits. I think do you think though if that came out, people would call it a cheap ripoff of, of um Narnia? Um King what, Guild Wars two stuff? Well, about Kodan. No, I don't think so. Narnia is nothing you know, like that. Giant- isn't it what was Chronicles of Narnia? Isn't that with the giant polar bear? Oh no, or is that the the it's wardrobe little... one? What? No, Chronicles of Narnia and the wardrobe are the same thing. They just call it yeah, different. yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's... they've got a giant polar bear guy in it, don't they? Yeah, but it's not. Is no that rip the one on? with the lion? It's a lion, dude. What's the one with the polar bear guy in armor? I feel really stupid. I'm making people cringe right now. <laughs> dude, what's the, what's the film? There's a film with a giant polar bear guy. Polar yeah. bear in armor. Wow, film. that's gonna work. That's Google that. The Golden Compass. There you go. There you People go. People think it's a ripoff of the Golden Compass. No, I I doubt that. I doubt that because they're humans and stuff. This and... got a six point one. I'll have you know, a meta score of fifty one. Very good film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> terrible film. <laughs> uh, okay. Next the, the next question comes from uh, okay and i've read this question right i know why you've picked it i think you've explained yourself very well are you sure you want to go into this territory again what oh all right i don't know i don't remember what i picked i picked this yesterday i i know uh, it's because it would have made your eye twitch reading it and i think the majority of people do know where you're coming from but here we go skinky one two three i don't understand why you want more legendaries so bad matt okay so they Uh. come out you do the grind you get it then what what has changed This Dang is, it! This is why the sound did I, of his eye twitching? Why did ah. I pick this question? Um, I, I think I already explained it already. Yeah, I basically explained it already. It's it's not a it's gear this, treadmill. It's it's yeah. it, you you might as well say that for everything. Okay, you might as well, well just say it for for everything now. If you get all the gear in the game, what next? Like did, did, you might as well say that for everything. That's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. And what, what t- what's changed? What's changed as well is the fact that now he can swap his stats. Exactly. That's exactly, it's a big change. It's a huge change that that you can you can now do that now, and I would play the game more just because I can do that. Um, well, 
you know, if I stop playing, you know, so like being able to switch builds without spending so much money, that's probably worth the hopefully not grind that the legendary armor is going to be. So mm-hmm. that's probably why they're spending so long on it. They're like sitting there twiddling their thumbs like we, we can't make this grindy. We can't. We can't. They're going to they're going to leave. They're going to leave if we make it grindy. I don't want I don't want them to leave. <laughs> they don't sound like that. <laughs> That was really I don't know bad. why, but I was picturing chipmunks there. I don't know why. <laughs> chipmunks. Yeah, chipmunks crying. That's pretty cute. When I was a kid, I always wanted chipmunks. I thought they'd be like the best pet ever. I knew a guy that had chipmunks. Chipmunks. But I think it would be kind of weird to the, see someone with chipmunks. The poor soul who's designing the new legendary stuff. The poor soul. He's probably going nuts. Or she's probably going nuts, dude. Like pulling her hair out. Can you imagine? So much pressure, dude. Whoever's Dude, the leader. I still stand by what we said in one of the earliest visual words. I think new legendaries should have old legendaries as precursors, except that they don't destroy the old legendary in the process of making them. There, well, there, there has to be something on there other than switching stats. There has to be some type of awesomeness. Cosmetic is 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 just like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Some people don't like Unless sunrise. Unless it's rare enough. Unless it's rare enough. If it's rare enough, then even the ugliest piece of thing people will go for. Can you imagine? At least I will. What about this mud? Just, just poop. If there was only two guys in the entire game that had that mud, why have you got mud with you? What's <laughs> what? that? Nothing, man. Okay. I live outside, uh, well, man. If only two I people had it, I would grind you for that. The cars? Absolutely. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah, but wow. yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. If like only like a if you only seen like uh, somebody with that um le- not legendary. Was it the hollow something? No, nah, well, it's the Halloween skin for the for for the ghastly shield. Ghastly grinning shield. Yeah, ghastly, ghastly grinning, grinning shield. shield. You know, yeah. if you only see like one of those, like every once in a while, you're like, man, I want one of those. You know, so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the next question comes from Lost Sanity Returned, who says, "What if they ordered offered a system where you unlocked stats, appearances, and runes for armor on a particular character? So when you got yourself an exotic set of boots of Ravager, for ex- for instance, and already had a su- set of boots for Berserker, if you used them and made them soulbound to that character, you would get the stats as a choosable option and the appearance as a choosable option." Sort of like how legendary stat selection works, but with you, the character, having to unlock the stats for each weapon, each trinket, and each item to be able to swap between them. I think that's a great idea. I, I quite like that. I think I think I think that's something I've already mentioned, isn't it? Um. Yeah. I, I, about maybe. being being able to just switch the skins instead. Yeah, I mean, this could be how the locker ends up working. You if- know, you un in the locker, you you. You place different stat combos by unlocking them, and also you unlock different skins. And then when you pull something out of the locker, you like it's almost like you're forging the the specific item you want each time, and it costs you transmutation charges or something. Right, right. I think right. that would be a really nice idea. Yeah. Um. Again, it's one of those things it, with all this stuff. It's more convenient for players, but then like over time, people are spending less gold because they're you know they have it all unlocked. But I think people would like that, especially since it's just bound to each item. If you bound it to just one skin, then that would be you know really really fair. I think it's a cool idea. I'm sure there's other MMOs that must do exactly that as well, right? Yeah, tons. The uh, the next question is from Thane Thane, who says, Hey, Matt and WP, have you ever had any paranormal or unexplained weird experiences? Man, it's so weird to be talking about Guild Wars 2 for like an hour and then it's like a real life thing. <laughs> yeah, we talked about a lot. Um, I had, I don't know if it was the chicken pox, but <laughs> I had some what is really... Where is this story going? I had some okay. weird, like before I got my chicken pox... <laughs> um, like a couple of days before, I think this is what the fever was kicking in. Um, I saw a little ghost boy in my closet. I kid you not. Was this at, like your aunt's house or something? No, this is my house. Never okay. again did I open that closet, um, very willy nilly ever again. Um, <laughs> when I was living there, because I was always scared that that little boy would be in there, dude. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't freaked out. At the time, I don't know why. I guess you know when you see something like that, you don't. You, you might you might be like in shock or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I and um I've also lived in a ghost house as well. Um something actually real. Um I used to see black clouds in my auntie's like room and stuff way back yeah, years yeah. ago. Um I used to hear f- 
a lot of my aunties and me used to hear footsteps in the garage because I used to live with like everyone in the house uh, way back when I was like really young. Footsteps and stuff falling down um, in the garage and then we'll open the door and nothing will be there. Very creepy stuff. Um, I would have terrible, terrible dreams in there. Really, really just disgusting f- people getting ripped apart type dreams. Like really wow. messed up dreams. Yeah. I It was very, very haunted in my dreams. At one time, this is going to get really freaky. Um, freaky deaky, I, man. I'm pretty okay. sure. I don't know if I was awake or not, right? I okay. I felt looking back that I was awake. I always remembered that I was awake during this, that my mom's eyeball popped out when when we were sleeping and started jumping around. I kid you not. You don't know whether you were awake. I feel I I remember that I was awake, but I could be I could what have been sleeping. What are you sleeping. talking about? You I, were asleep, dude. There's no way. Dude, I I could be I could have been asleep. I'm I could have been asleep. I'm I'm willing to say that. <laughs> but I was freaked out and I tried How to wake up my mom. How did your mom react? I tried to wake up my mom and she didn't wake up. That was the freakiest she- part. So, and then what? How does it? You got to keep going. How does the story end? I was young. I was young. That's why I said I could have. I could have been asleep, but I remember staying awake, turning around, and just staying awake. What if the next time your mum visits you now, she has an eye patch on and she doesn't explain it, and she's just like, and you're like, what's up? What's up with the eye patch? And she's like, what are you talking about? I've had this for years. Dun, I've dun, always dun. only had one. <laughs> Se- <laughs> Seriously. Like, Seriously, that would that would that would freak me out. That would, oh, I know that, what I'm doing for April Fools. Can you give me your mom's number? That that would give her a little call. Oh, so you're coming over? I, no, I've I'll been just inviting call her and tell her to do it. I've been I've been telling you to come over, you know, for spring break. You know, I offered to pay and everything, and you just don't want to. You just don't want to have a personal break connection. Spring break is not a thing you. that I believe in. Spring break. It's not. It's not British. It's not uh, British. Pa- so it's not good for me. I uh, I thought I was magic when I was younger, because um, I'm sure everyone's had Go this. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure everyone's had this, okay? You got something like, say, this little USB stick, okay? Mm-hmm. Or this spoon with a little bit of string tied to it. You're holding it in your hands, and then you drop it. But you, it slips out of your hand in such a way that as you drop it, it doesn't touch any more of your skin on the way down. It doesn't move the air in any way. And then you look down at the desk, or where you thought it landed... What's that? It's gone. It's it's not there. And no matter where you look, ever, it's gone. Like, it is full on, boom, gone. And when I was younger, this used to happen to me a lot because I was a clumsy child. And I used to watch magic shows and stuff where people were like, oh, no, I've got this in my hand. <gasps> and then now it's disappeared. I used to think I could do it and I was magic and I just hadn't tapped into how that worked. <laughs> and that's probably the most weird unexplainable thing that's ever happened to me really i tend to be i don't know no ghosts there's, there's no nothing other weird like that su- no no I, I i think when i was a lot younger i used to like after i saw the sixth sense i used to be like oh i think i can see ghosts but i i don't know i think it's just child's imagination the, the weirdest thing that ever happened to me was to do with my dog where i used to live where for like a full day he just went missing like completely <laughs> missing all right and it wasn't that i magic magic him out of existence he just went missing and then later on, like we're all panicking and whatever, he, he, he comes back and he stinks. He's, he's totally dry, completely dry. Nothing weird about him to look at him, but he stinks of fish. Like the smell of fish is just grotesquely all over him. Like after a bath, he still smelt of it. Like terrible, terrible fish smell. And um, then for like a month after, the dog would never leave the house. Like terrified, wouldn't go on any walks, would never leave the house ever. We never figured that out ever. What if what if he was, you know, hit on the? What if he ran out of the house and got hit by a or caused a truck like a truck that was delivering fish to swerve off the road, crash? The fish fell out of the back of the truck, fell all over him. Maybe he ate some. He ran off for the rest of the day. It dried into his coat. He came home. The police and ambulance went, took the van away, everything, and then there you go. That's the answer. And now he's scared because he got hit by a car almost. I mean, you could you could totally um, get him to come out. You just it has to be very a slow process. But because um, I I used to I used to go heavy on training my dog. Um, but when they go through experiences like that, yeah, they they won't come out for nothing unless like yeah, it took a while before he finally started to go out again. Yeah, <laughs> it was where did pretty he, weird, weird. Where thing. did he poop and pee? 
Do you have a backyard or something? Oh, he went, yeah, he went in the garden, yeah. Garden or backyard? English country, garden. Uh, the back garden. In the back the back garden? Never lo- yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. What? Uh, what street not- was that on? Um, you I have to think about think it? Of, uh, uh, Paranormal Street. There you go. <laughs> Paranormal Avenue. <clears throat> oh, that's the name of a TV show if I've ever heard one. Welcome Paranormal, to Paranormal Avenue. Avenue. Oh, gosh. Oh, there you go. Next question. <laughs> ne- next, oh, next, my God. Next question. Next. You don't want to... Talk, uh, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Next question is from 001 Ton Bush Crafting, who says, Matt and WP. So, if you could make one big change to the combat system, what would it be and why? Give Guardian stealth. Whoa, that's mind blowing. We never thought about that with cross profession stuff. Any class you like, oh, having like shadow. A thief with anything so? would be amazing. Absolutely Pretty amazing because cool. a thief. Yeah, but go ahead. What, 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 do you, what would you a change? Backstabbing warrior. You know, Ooh. warriors can stealth. Actually, guardians can stealth. If they're Norn, they pop the like leopard form, and you can stealth and then cross a distance of like two thousand five hundred range in the blink of an eye, and then attack someone. <laughs> yeah, that speed thing. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty fun to do too. Um, I don't know. One big change to the combat system. It's not the kind of thing I like to armchair speculate on, to be honest. I'm a bit more reserved than that. <laughs> Just as boring as that is, one big change. I, I'll, I'll, I'll peel for the same change I randomly started talking about earlier about how what would incentivize healing power to be stronger. I think a lot of the combat system's broken in the way the enemies work more than anything else. Yeah. The combat system's very fun. Like, PvP is crazy fun, and it's dynamic, and it's engaging, and there's a lot to focus on. But it's not in PvE, because your opponents don't have access to the same stuff you do. Enemies rarely, if ever, dodge. They can be stacked against walls. Their AI is just atrocious. Their abilities are all one-shot things that you've just got to dodge roll, and... You know, um, that that's what I think the main problem is. It's on the it's on the AI side for PVE. For World vs. World and PvP, I'd say it's all pretty engaging, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And, and definitely PvE, it, it tends to lose... Well, once you start getting good at how your character works and, you know, your builds and everything, PvE kind of gets kind of stale. Um, mm-hmm. It just kind of happened to me where it just kind of got stale. So it's like, eh. And the way they scale up the da- uh, the difficulty is just damage. And, you know, being able to, you take like two hits and you're dead. Like, that that's not a good way. I want to be able to be placed a certain way. Like, you know how World v. World, people, you know, they, they have this new thing where everyone's in a group and everyone follows the commander. Oh, stealth. Oh, bombs, bombs, bombs. Oh, you know, veil, veil, World veil, veil, veil for, mm-hmm. for, you know, to, and then cut left, cut right, 90 degrees. Okay, go, go back, go back, go back, go back. Heal, heal, guardians, heal, heal, heal. Uh, get them out, get them out, war banner, war banner, you know, like, finish them off, finish them like, these guys are just yelling out stuff, like, there's more, you know, I mean, that could be just be organized world v. world, you know, and you probably never have it in PvE, but I don't know, like, I feel like the best we have is the new boss fights, but I don't want to do the boss fights just for that, I, I want it in just regular play, you know, and I feel mm-hmm. like it's, it has a lot to do with the way the combat was set up from the beginning, and I'm I'm gonna go. I'm people are gonna hate me for this, but I like the way um, they have Wildstar set up, where you kind of see the telegraphs, and uh, never went to never went to. Yeah, there, there's a lot in like it's just riddled with a whole bunch of telegraphs, which I kind of like because you, you kind of see it all happening and Is stuff that like that. Is any different to the giant skill effects in Guild Wars Two? Um, yeah, yeah. It's shown a lot more for everything. Um, also in uh, Neverwinter as well. You kind of see when the enemy is doing their special attacks and you can kind of like, okay, he's doing a wide range attack. You can um, stand in the middle of it. Kind of like how the boss fight uh, went with Scarlet. When you went, when, once you uh, kill the three knights, the three champions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once mm-hmm. you go in. Kind of wh- how that happened. Is kind of how every boss fight is in Neverwinter and kind of how it is in Wildstar. I haven't played, like, too much of Wildstar. Well, I played a lot, but not, not like, all into the boss fights and stuff like that. But regular monsters have telegraphs, and you can actually dodge it and stuff like that, which, which, which it, it, it makes it easier for players to be like, okay, this is bad. I need to move out the way. Let me use my dodge. So they're not just randomly dodging, which I tend to do sometimes, um, because I get <laughs> I get runes of energy, um, sigil of energy. So I just keep and crits um, with 
endurance, so I, I keep dodging so I can heal myself with a guardian. But um, I tend to get lazy sometimes and start dodging and not knowing when to dodge. So you have to look at the enemy, um, um, you know, animations. Animations. Which animations. In, in practice, I agree with that, but the problem is it's drowned out by skill effects. Skill everywhere. effects, exactly. You know, and that especially you don't need to see. exactly, and, and if you you're you're playing with other people, you just see a bunch of skill effects. You don't see any of those animations, so it's easier to have it on the ground. Like, oh, she's about to do this. Oh, this character is about to do this. You kind of know what's happening, and that's why mm-hmm. the telegraphs I think are pretty good, and that's I, th- I think that's why uh, a lot of people are interested in Wildstar. You know, it, it it has that casual grab to it, but then it's extremely hardcore. You know, mm-hmm. like everything is hardcore, all the stuff, and you you just kind of condition yourself. Okay, I have to dodge out of this, and I think um, casuals going into that will learn how to play the game better than people going into Guild Wars Two, because there's no way to teach people. Okay, you have to dodge when this is happening. You know, and it's kind of hard to say. You know, learn how to dodge when you like you can't even see the animations, and you just kind of have to learn the character's movements. But I don't know. I don't know. There's a whole lot of stuff on that. But yeah, you, that's what were, I would change. That's what I would. You change. were mentioning as well, like early on, just out of curiosity here, the world versus world thing. You know, the tournament's coming up super soon. Do you do you think that you'll be participating in it? Oh, that of much? course, absolutely. I'm gonna find me. I think I'm gonna think be full on with this one. I was last season, and I think I'll be coming. What back server to world are you on? I'm on Emery Bay at the moment. But if the six days goes up and there's like a silver tier server i mean emery bay was silver last time but a lot of our guilds have left so it's sort of a bit more empty so i'm thinking of going to one of the bigger servers and um, tarnish coast and... has a good community. i might go to I, if, if tarnish coast has got slots i might go tarnish coast because they're like up there for world versus world well so they, cool. they re, yeah we recently got up there because a lot of people from black gate uh left and joined tarnish coast because i guess better community i heard i haven't experienced it myself but i heard a lot of the community in black gate is very like bad um, I don't know. I've been on Black I don't know TS sure. a lot lately, and they're not they're not that bad. Well, right. not lately, yeah. Maybe I've, a month I've ago. talked with a few people from Black Gate, and they don't seem that bad to me. So I don't know. I think it's just it's just people say that, don't they? Oh, why are these people coming to our server? Oh, it's because we're awesome. Our server community is brilliant. You know, it's just random nerds saying stuff like that that you don't really need to listen yeah. to. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty so, sure not um, everyone is evil. When when you say like, oh, that group is evil, I'm pretty sure not everyone is evil. <laughs> Yeah, right, you know yeah. that's a, that's a life thing. I think you should repeat that. That's a life thing. What was that again? <laughs> Why? Why well, do I have to repeat it? They can rewind. They can rewind. Okay, well, guys, you should listen to that. Look, if someone says that group of people is evil, take it with a pinch of salt. They're probably not all evil. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's uh-huh. that stops wars. Uh-huh. People understanding that fact stops right, wars. Right. Right. But if they're if they're just outright murdering everyone, I decide not to go near them. Okay. Okay, but they might have Fair a heart enough. of gold. They might have a heart of gold. You a murderer know. with a heart of gold. A murderer <laughs> with a heart of gold. That is a movie. That is a movie. That is a movie. All right. Um, the last question <laughs> I don't know about is more about Zerk meta. Do you want to talk about the Zerk meta more? N- no. All right. Well, then that was the last question. Quickly ring the bell. N- no. I'll give us the last uh, question. Okay, I'll give go. us the last question. Woo! So, uh, how are you spending no! your weekend this weekend? One of the bells came off. Oh. This cheap thing. He, he has one leg now. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Wait, what? One foot He's now. got bells the, on his legs. The, the bells are his feet. Oh, I thought they were, like, on his antlers. No, no, no. Because they were, like, tied to ribbons on his antlers. And, like and he, has, ribbons, he has two on his sweater as well. Is there any risk of the sweater falling off? Um, No. No, there's no risk. Uh, what, what, you All right, well, that was that the last question. That was the last question. Is there any risk of the sweater falling off? Oh, okay. All right. And the so? answer to it was no. All right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's the Visual Wood podcast. Uh, this, uh, uh, last question. Dang it. Well, I don't have a last question. Not a real Guild Wars C last question. What are you talking about? I just asked about? you a question. Uh, if you want to play in World vs. World, or I can pull one from my Q and A if you if you like. <laughs> Anyways, it's professional. Anyways, it's professional. Uh huh. You don't you don't see question question nine there? You don't you don't see that there? Oh, is there a question nine? Yeah. Oh my god, there is. There is a last question. Okay, my mistake. All right, I'm an idiot. It, wow. Are you serious? <laughs> no, my window my window was like scrolled to the point where it had one tiny little bit to scroll down, but it was so small that I didn't appreciate the bar was even there. 
So yeah, I didn't even know that existed. Okay, question nine. <laughs> right, there is a last question. Congratulations, <laughs> Sean Garrett. You, this is your lucky day. You professional. Look like you're, professional you see that podcast. He's smoldering. Right here. Yeah, dude. D- dude, th- see, see, he's he's one of the dudes that wears pants low, dude. That's my dog right there. What's up? Whoa. What's up, Sean? No, you don't... What's up, Sean? How you doing? How you doing? He probably <laughs> he probably doesn't. It's all it's good fun. Don't don't, don't make it like that. <laughs> Why do you have to go all silent? It was a joke. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I, I was just admiring how well you can fit in with various demographics. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Garrett says, question, long-time listener, first-time commenter. WP, do you think ArenaNet should add a more quest-oriented system to the game, or at least some kind of story tracker, if the personal story won't be returning? I actually like the way it works now, but a lot of the players miss the story because you pretty much have to find it in-game. Yeah, I've always been an advocate for traditional quests. I don't need them to be particularly engaging as long as they've got some fair story going with them, and I like that feeling of having stuff completed going into like a completed log and somehow the personal story completion log where you can sort of recap everything doesn't quite do it for me. I think Guild Wars 2 is like, in some respects, half a game. It's got fantastic open world content where you're walking around, the events are really good, but I think that's all, that all would be really nice if it was seen as a supplement to, you know, a really large core set of 500 to 1,000 even. Well, okay, maybe that's a bit high, but each each like map should have, you know, 20 or so traditional quests in it where you're going around and we're talking to npcs and finding stuff collecting items killing certain bosses collecting numbers killing numbers of enemies traditional quests that were done in guild wars 1 were amazing and if that system was in guild wars 2 also i think it would um support the dynamic events and everything that the game stands for so well i'd love it man and especially as a vehicle for driving living world stuff instead of like mails and obscure things like that you know these dots that are currently everywhere you know the, the golden stars a traditional quest log would be so nice but it's the kind of thing i don't think they'll ever do at at the beginning at the beginning of launch i would say i wouldn't agree but now after i've played the game and i i like i have no interest in going out in the world and leveling anymore because i've done it so many times and Mm -hmm. and and i i I played a couple other mmos Uh, i played uh wildstar not wildstar eso I played mm-hmm. uh, ESO and I played through the story part and and you know that's how you level up and stuff and you go through these dungeons and you have to pick consequences and you know I don't know if you get attached to characters or anything like that but there's a story going on and I'm pretty much interested in it I I enjoyed it um, hmm. I miss that I miss it's just not there in Guild Wars is it I, I, I miss, miss it that because you know there, there's something there there's something there there's something like. I th- I feel like a lot of the moments in the dynamic events would have been more powerful if there was like some more story towards it, like finding the random uh I think it was a mesmer in the cave in, uh Snowden drifts. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the little boy, the little boy as well. Yeah, like a, a little quest to go over there and learn about them a bit, and you know, yeah, be guided over there. Yeah, be much better. One, one thing to consider. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, I didn't mean to no, 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 no. I was just gonna say it. I, I would have enjoyed it more if there was more backstory and and leading up towards there, and you're you're you know some person mm. you know going to find his son or something like that, and, uh, and some dialogue some dynam- between them. Some dynamic events chains do offer that, like they are large stories because there's so many. But it's really easy to miss those chains, and especially implementation wise, the devs never tell you this is event number one in a chain of five to make people stick about. There's always a long period of waiting around where you're not sure whether NPCs are going to do anything, whether they're going to keep talking and trigger another event or not. People just do one event and move on, and like practically speaking, you don't get much of that experience. And I think it's easy to say, oh yeah, traditional quest would be nice, and we're looking forward to it now because we've already done all the dynamic events. If they were there at launch then you know they'd also all be boring to us at this point anyway because we've already done them right you know i i really think the biggest reason why i enjoy leveling up less now than i did before is because i've already done it all um and that would still be the same for traditional quests like they're not as renewable definitely not as renewable as dynamic events which are always procking but i do think the two systems hand in hand would have been perfect and it's really needed for living world just to make things clearer to people and you know uh, offer people a way of seeing everything they've, they've accomplished like in log form would be really nice um but yeah, I I mean, the game was marketed to be free of traditional quests and to be this big game changer. And to go back on it now would draw, you know, attention of critics and people that would say, oh, look, Guild Wars 2 finally folds and becomes a traditional MMO. People are ripped 
biting at any opportunity to say that Guild Wars 2 is going back on its philosophies mm -hmm. and this would be one of the biggest things that, that would make them do that so I don't think they will change it All right. but yeah okay so a real last question there you, go. <laughs> you never rang the bell for it though yeah I did I rang the oh, bell before does it count does it count yes I rang the bell after okay. I, thinking right. that we were okay. gonna, you were going to do it All wow right. yeah All you right. didn't you didn't do it because you don't have your glasses on uh, I'll accept that actually I got my glasses right. I don't need glasses for computer or anything i only need glasses for like when i'm looking I really, need glasses really long range for everything because i'm i'm blind without them like are you sure and far-sighted um no i'm more far-sighted or is it nearsighted because nearsighted i can see near right but can't see far so i'm nearsighted yeah it's it's like unnecessarily complicated isn't it yeah 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 <laughs> it is I think nearsighted means you have bad vision far away yeah yeah and far-sighted means you have bad vision close up so I'm nearsighted. Like one eye is nearsighted, one eye is farsighted. <laughs> yeah, know, like one eye is bad, is worse than the other. So, I think everyone has that. Even people with really good vision have one eye worse than the other. I was reading this thing about people that have better than twenty twenty vision, and I'm like super jealous of them. I'm like, what is this? Yeah, like dude. this guy um, that was out in Iraq or something, and they, this guy was telling a story about how his friend could spot one of his. Um, buddies in camo laying in the floor like miles and miles away and nobody else could and he always could really easily just because his eyes were like phenomenal for, for whatever reason Jeez. man why isn't there surgery that can do that we have surgery yeah that i'm waiting for implants bad eyes. like deus ex man implants if if laser eye surgery can make my less than perfect vision perfect why can't we have laser eye surgery that makes perfect vision better than perfect it, it's in all coming. seriousness i don't understand that it's coming, dude. I'm telling you, it's coming. And then the big corporation that sells the drug that keeps your implants in place, uh, um, you know, it's going to start charging more. And then people who have implants, you know, that, you know, basically sacrifice their humanity just to get these implants because they didn't need it because they weren't in an accident or anything. They just replaced their perfectly healthy eye. Um, now can't afford the, the, the gel or grease or drug to help them have their implants. So they end up, you know, crashing down and... You know, and being homeless because they can't pay to get this drug. Which but they're is, this is basically yeah. what happened in Deus Ex. <laughs> Deus yeah, Ex Revolution. I, I know. What, what happens in Deus Ex, though, after they stop getting their, their stuff? Does the, do their implants shut down? Yeah, they shut down. And they start, like, being on the streets and stuff to get money. And, like, uh, yeah. I, I think, like, it starts, like, oozing and stuff, and they eventually die. I, I can't remember. Does the, plot, does the plot of Deus Ex completely fall apart if the that requirement to have a gel goes away? It's, like, the entire thing of the story. I know that it's, like, there's a big class divide and so on, but is that all brought about by the fact everyone's having implants that need to be constantly maintained with this commercial product that's, like, a drug? No. But if that element's gone, does the whole story collapse? No, I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. Okay. Because that, that wasn't like the main thing. I think it started some events, but I can't remember. I actually can't remember the full on story of the I love their marketing Revolution. campaign for that game. Yeah, it like, was good. Oh, the trailers for it and stuff. But the music. So oh, yes. Mm. They had one trailer that ended with a line. Uh, this is not the end, but I can see it from here or something like that. And I thought that was so cool. I was like, oh, trailer hype. It's the best thing ever. Pre-order now. Okay. I never did pre-order. <laughs> and you never played it, apparently. I did play it with a daily deal. Oh, okay. Th 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 that's it. And I, I, I like, I've learned stuff about it, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> I've not even played Anyways, it. guys, thank you so much for watching the Visual Wood Podcast. And stay visual. Ridlock has found his pants. No, he has <laughs> not. <laughs>